Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Chicos y chicas, bienvenidos a Stay Busy con Armand Sadler, uh, where we have response. <laughs> I don't know how to say the whole spiel in Spanish. Oh, I, I thought she was about to keep going. <laughs> I was oh, like, hold on. I wish. I thought that trip was lit. My, my, oh. <laughs> my Duolingo streak is only 152 right now. Mm. So I'm, I'm not good, fully though. there yet. But uh, welcome to Stay Busy with Armand Sather, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I'm, of course, your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Papi, founder of BNB, aka the Bald Nigga Bombshell, in your podcast studio, in your <laughs> headphones, in your speaker, in your car speakers, in your dreams, never in your nightmares who also goes by Chinedu, and the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie, Armand Sadler. I'm here with the gang. How y'all feeling, gang? I'm good, y'all. Good. Great. You guys forgot to say your names. Oh, <laughs> shit. We're just so excited. We're just so, we're sorry. We're so excited to be here. Like, you know, we're just week. like, whoa. Like, hey, I'm Will. Right? This is Miss Two Bs. Right. You know, there we go. That's we, it. yeah, we're sorry, but yeah. I just want to get into y'all weekend, nah, see how y'all up, been. Look up, look I'm like, up. get into the topics. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just yeah. been a lot. Yeah, it's been a lot of like on and then off and mm-hmm. all that, but it's always good to link back up with y'all. Um, it was, it was like, I don't know. It was on my spirit today to sip a little bit. Um, we've reached month four of yes. the season, which is crazy. Time flies. So I was like, let me get some champagne for the gang. And you got my favorite. Little... Yeah, we go. The big Prosecco. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Can never go wrong. Feel me? Feel me? But how, how y'all doing? How, how was y'all weekends? Chilled weekend. I finished Love Island finally. Nice. Nice. I, mm. I would have picked um, Serena and Cordell mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So my weekend was great. And if we're going to talk TV shows... <laughs> Um, watched Penguin episode two, which was amazing. And then Penguin industry. Okay. I don't know if you, people. <sighs> I just started industry, so I'm I'm a I'm a get there. Okay, mm-hmm. it was amazing. One of the best finales I've ever seen in my life. So okay. when you catch up, let me know. We're gonna be locked in together. We'll, we'll definitely have the TV show talks more. For like, sure. I've heard I gotta watch industry, so I'll, I'll get mm-hmm. to that. You would love it, bro. Um, yeah. I've heard good things about Penguin too. So yeah, yeah, definitely gotta tap in. Uh, my weekend was chill. I just watched a lot of football. Stayed in the crib. All this traveling lately has been tiring. I'm traveling again. I'm going to Atlanta this weekend. Damn. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> what you doing out there? Uh, There's a WWE show. Uh, oh, it's going to be fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hearing some some rappers will be there, so I'm trying to... Cardi? Belga Lee's supposed Not to be there? Not that one. Not which, that one. Oh, okay. Which one is it? Like, what, what event is it? It's called Bad Blood. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Metro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Metro yeah, is, so is doing the promotion yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Future and Metro's GTA is the theme song. So, oh, fine. Mm. and Atlanta, it's Atlanta, so anybody could pop out. WWE think, yeah. is doing their big one with the hip hop act. So, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited to be there, though. I haven't been to a show since SmackDown came up in the summer. I think June. So, it's always always exciting to go back. It's gonna be but, fun. Yeah, I can't wait. But yeah, uh, listeners, I know you couldn't wait to hear us. And so make sure that you hear us as soon as we drop by subscribing to our YouTube channel, subscribing to all audio streaming platforms, leave a like, a share, a comment, tell your friends, tell your friends, give us feedback. We love it. Tweet us all that good stuff. You can tweet us or uh, comment on Instagram or follow our TikTok. All of them are at stay busy pod. If you want to tap into the podcast only fans, that is patreon.com backslash stay busy pod is a new episode out. Real Yearners, uh, where I talk about an experience I had recently, um, a trip that I took, and just some revelations that I had. So make sure that you tap into <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, my. So what, what, what happened? Revelations. <laughs> revelations. That's it. What? Was, was that, like, dramatic? I mean, it kind of. That's, like, like, that's a heavy-ass <laughs> word, my boy. Like, that's like you like came to, like, real conclusions. So, I gained like, some clarity. Right. Like, you really made decisions. Like. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's what life is about. Yeah, getting older is crazy. We at that age. You mm-hmm. make decisions. You have, you know, you mm-hmm. gain insight, mm-hmm. understanding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of insight and understanding, uh, let's jump into this chat. So, you have heard me just speak ad nauseum about this young woman, um, Sabrina Carpenter, <laughs> my my pop princess, my queen. Um, she just really just reaffirmed why she is a queen to the world. So, there was a clip circulating on uh, Twitter, 
X if you're an old person who calls it X. It'll always be Twitter <laughs> to me. I'm never calling that shit X. Ever. Right. Um, there was a clip where she, she performed at MSG. She's sitting on stage. And she's like, so, you know, what should we talk about? Should we talk about how I got the mayor indicted? <laughs> and I didn't know the context to it. So I was just like, is she just like saying some random shit to be funny? Like, because it was very timely, obviously. Mayor Eric Adams got indicted this weekend. And so I was like, all right, let, let me do some research on this. So I, I literally Google Sabrina Carpenter, Eric Adams. Up comes this article from Variety where they give the whole spiel on what happened. So she recorded a music video to her song Feather in a church. It was, like, promiscuous. It was bloody. It was, like, she was doing shit in a church that typically doesn't get done in the church. And, like, the, like, diocese of Brooklyn or whatever said, like, condemned it. And they made them, like, re-bless the church. It's, like, that. sacred area and all that. And then the priest who, like, oversees the church was, like, pretty much re reprimanded and, like, condemned for it. And then they come to find out that priest had ties to Eric Adams. So when Eric Adams gets of indicted, course. this priest's name comes up. Of so course. I'm like, oh, Sabrina wasn't up there just saying some random shit. Like, yeah. she played She's a part <laughs> in what, what you know, came up this past weekend. So um, the Eric Adams shit was crazy itself. I know was, he's very unpopular among New Yorkers and even people outside of New York who just see the things that he says. But... To see that, like, Sabrina's connected to the situation and she got on stage in MSG and made light of it. And it was like, <laughs> like, I'm seeing all these people on Twitter like, yo, she's a queen. Like, all this shit, yes. like, really praising them. <laughs> like, wow, like, she can't do wrong. She really can't do wrong. She's cooking right now. She got, like, five uh, five consecutive weeks, three songs in the Hot 100. Um, Good Graces just went gold. Like, she's cooking. Beyonce she's cooking listening crazy. to her. Yeah, yeah, she out she here. Lit. She out here, so. Um, Sabrina, I'm I'm very proud of you. I I, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Um, and yeah, I'm I can't wait to listen to the album again. It doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. Jesus, I too am a carpenter. There we go. And Armand converted me. Thank you. Thank you. I too am a carpenter. Weird. She's she's dope. And yeah. I just love like that like whimsical. Mm -hmm innocence yeah. but still like you know sexual yeah 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 it's like and she's super media trained because mm -hmm. i remember i read the article and she's like oh jesus is a carpenter yeah. <laughs> i'm dope. like nah i love this girl yeah, she yeah. is super witty yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 she should be she'd be wearing them like 1920s like main Marilyn outfits Monroe. but then she'd be on stage like you know like you know letting it out i'm like oh, yeah man, <laughs> need that freak on the low you can take it ain't um, even on the low nah, and that's why it's i love definitely her on the high. <laughs> yeah that's because she still looks so innocent like yeah. you're not you're not looking at her the way like you know yeah. anyone else who's more provocative than her but she's For talking sure. about the same things so. yeah 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 no she's she, i'm tapped in she'd be la leaving it out there in the songwriting so to quote miss two b's um i used to be a fan but now i'm an air conditioner type shit I mean, we, we locked in <laughs> no we are we are <laughs> Big I'm not. I'm not an air conditioner yet, but I'm a fan. Okay, I'm a fan. You get. I'm that. getting there. Yeah, yeah. You like one of them like high powered fans that mm -hmm. like you know spins mm -hmm. and like you a Dyson. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, niggas is crazy. Nah, I don't know. Yeah. Like that's niggas a perfect comparison. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, salute to Sabrina Carpenter and salute to to Justice. Um, <laughs> but wasn't that crazy though? Like that she really was a like. Yeah. I thought it was just a jokey joke. Me too. too. Yeah, I was like, oh, she she's just said. You know, people just say random shit. Like they just make jokes about <clears throat> shit. You know what's crazy, bro? And she's fire. She's dope. I'm I'm a carpenter too. A little. There we bit. go. Kind of just like I'm just in carpenter class. I'm not full blown <laughs> okay. carpenter. Yet. But um, carpenter in training. <laughs> something you said earlier that like I feel like people in New York kind of take for granted. Like niggas look at our mayor crazy as fuck yeah. bro and That's like always been the case. I, I mean i know it has <laughs> and like maybe it's maybe it's like me living in new york for, for a long time now and like actually like seeing like a transition to a different mayor and then like actually like living through this shit and then see him getting indicted it's like this nigga is out of control bro mm -hmm. He like, had a Trini flag on his head and said he was going to mash up the parkway. Bro, I, you know like, what? You know <laughs> you know what I seen for the first time yesterday was that that clip where they was interviewing me. He's like, yo, you can be in New York and um, a plane can hit a building yeah. or a nigga can be open to a business. <laughs> what the fuck? But, How are these but did he lie? <laughs> he didn't lie. He, he, he didn't lie. I he mean, didn't lie. The plane but like, only come happened on. once. But, like, like, uh, it, it was an attempt before that. That's true. Bro, just act like it's a regular occurrence. Like, yo, planes just be hitting shit. Like, 
Bro, I was just like, hold on a second. Yo, this nigga is one of a kind. <laughs> Somebody said he's the craziest mayor we ever had. And I was like, damn, for is real? He, I think Giuliani was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's crazier than Giuliani? I'm, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Y'all, I, have, I, I want to ask people. String of I want to ask people. Like, I want to ask older people. Yeah, fingers. there's never really been a good mayor. But the craziest thing about the indictment, too, before we move on, is <laughs> the fact that Diddy's former security guard Jesus said that Christ. that might have been the reason why the feds looked into Diddy because of the key to the city. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, yo, we're at the point where I'm about to rewatch Kanye West's interviews and rants because <laughs> we was just letting shit gloss over because we just like, nah, because the truth <laughs> sounds crazy as fuck. So. That nigga Kanye texted Diddy and said, nigga, you fuck fan. you, fan. you fan. And where's the lie? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, No, fan. yo, yo, yo. You were, we, we are at that point where oh, everything... You got a little... You got a little... Oh, oh, oh. My fault. green feather, yeah. Okay, cool. my fault, my Grinch. fault. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the point where everything that anybody says about anything that's going on and, and like, this type of stuff, it has to be considered true or, like, yes. fact-check it because... It's crazy. It's, it, it's crazier than fiction, like, <laughs> at this point. Like, nigga, like, this is real life happening. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's, that happened. Um, we'll see what comes of that. Um, let's let's that jump case. into a bunch of the new music happening. So, um, you guys weren't here. I talked about it with Fergie Baby, but we discussed Travis Scott and Sabrina Carpenter's battle for number one on the Billboard 200. Travis lost, and, like, two weeks later, he got the number one. And he's been doing it through all the bundles and the vinyls and merch and all that. And then he had one of the biggest drops in Billboard 200 history. He dropped 92%. No, so that was before he went number one finally. Now he's going from number one to dropping completely off of the Billboard 200 chart. So he broke his own record for the biggest drop in Billboard <laughs> 200 history, which is insane. And it was it's funny, too. I, I, I joked about it in a group chat because I'm just... Travis, for me, I, I I was a really big fan years ago. Same. I'm getting really like disillusioned with him. Like, really, a- after Astro World, n- none of his music really did it for me. Like, it got very uninteresting. And so now these, and I get it. Like, a lot of people do the bundle jigs. Like, that's just the game. But the fact that like he went so hard for a ten year old mixtape and tried to get Sabrina's moment from uh, from her. It was, like, whack to me. And so now <laughs> now that he's having his... And I took that personally. Yeah, I'm low-key, man. Like, <laughs> yo, c- Carpenters, we stand up for one another. Like, we here. Um, so seeing this happen, I'm just like, I get it from a label standpoint, from an artist standpoint. Going number one off a 10-year-old mixtape is fire. Drake did it was so far gone. Mm-hmm. But Drake didn't do all the bundles and shit. He just put, like, but Drake is bigger. Like, it, it's whatever. But, like, it, it's, just, it's just whack. Like, and it's the very unfortunate reality that we're in like people are using bots all these bundles the merch the vinyls it's like i get it you know you want to give your fans these physical things that represent your music and you know connect them to you but i'm just like god damn Over Travis. It. like yeah it's 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 whack it's whack to me how do you how, how do y'all feel about this historic historic drop off the billboard 200 and just travis scott in general at this point it reminded me of that Nikki Queen radio rant mm-hmm. when she gave him cocksucker of the day mm-hmm. and said that, you know, he beat um, the Queen album out because he's selling clothes and got Kylie Jenner and Stormy mm-hmm. promoting his ticket sales. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it. she didn't lie. He definitely is selling more. No, well, I did see a report claim that their streaming um, sales were, like, close. Mm-hmm. But, like, she didn't do, and she has done bundles in the past. But, like, the truth is we are straying way too far from, like, the essence of music and hip-hop. And, like, we are, <clears throat> these things don't matter. Mm-hmm. The bundles don't matter. Like, when Nikki said, yo, what's Travis Scott's best bar? I cackled. I cackled because I was already a fan. <laughs> I kind of fell off like before Astro World. Yeah. But like when she said that, I couldn't think of one. I feel like a lot of people, you, how you just mentioned you kind of fell off as a fan, then you kind of fell off as a fan. Yeah. A lot of people, I see a lot of slim- similarities in fans of like uh, people that used to be like fans like Kid Cudi and mm-hmm. like like Travis Scott. Same people that like fell off like, eh, Kid Cudi was cool until yeah. like, you know. <clears throat> It's like the same type of feel, and I don't know if that's like Kanye artists or like yeah. whatever the fuck, but yeah, Travis Scott, bro, I, I, I don't know when it happened. It probably happened around Rodeo or maybe a little bit after. Actually, not Rodeo. It's probably Astro like you were saying, mm-hmm. but like I feel like his brand became bigger than his music, Yeah, and it was just like- 
When he got with Kylie. Yeah, and then after that, it was like the, the McDonald's collab. All like It was just like, yeah. you're doing like McDonald's, Fortnite. It was just like, it was just like... Cactus Jack sent me. Yeah, bro. It was, yeah. Like, it was just like, it was like a overload of like merch bundles and yeah. everything yeah. you could think of. So it's like... Don't and, get me wrong, I love the merch. Yeah, like it's, it's fire, <laughs> it's bro. Fire. I get it. He, he literally has one of the best merches yeah. I've like, ever seen ever. Yeah. Like, so... Like, I check for his merch. It's so. fire. Like, yeah. he actually makes, like, the like the fact that he has his own Jordan that was actually, like, yeah. dope. Like, that shit yeah. was cool. But, you know, that... It's not music, bro. Mm -hmm. It's a shoe. It's a Nike. It, it, it's cool, but... Yeah. Uh, and I feel like <laughs> the type of music he makes just has a ceiling. I think he peaked at Astro World. Facts. Like that that's the best music he's ever made to me. And he was on a run of great albums. Rodeo, yep. um, Birds in the Trap Sing McKnight. Yep. Even like you go back days before Rodeo, mm -hmm. like he he was he was on a string of really good projects. And yeah, I don't know. Some I just I just kinda got lost along the way. Like he had a bunch of features in the pandemic that I didn't really like. Um, obviously twenty twenty one, the um what, what's his festival called? Um Uh Astro World, no? Astro Fest, something like Astro. that, maybe. Astro, Astro World. We know. We know. Yeah, 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 that yeah. happened, and I didn't think he handled it well. But like, I'm, I'm kind of able to separate. I, I, yeah. I don't know how. He, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know how he's supposed to handle, it, but he didn't handle the best because that one yeah. video went. It was like turned to a meme when he like scratched his head like, oh, yeah. Die. Like, yeah, and then his interview with Charlemagne. <laughs> yeah, it was um, just like. Uh. But yeah, I don't know. I just and I'm able to separate the person from the music. So like, but the music just didn't do it for me. Like, yeah, Utopia was not good and. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. He's. I'm like. Whenever I see featuring Travis Scott on a project, I just get annoyed. I'm like, oh my fucking god. Low key, it's <sighs> like oversaturated at this point. Like, yo, like yeah. take it, take a break. Like, I like. <sighs> like you know how when niggas discover parsley and they would put it on everything, but too Boy. much of it. Travis became the parsley <laughs> that like niggas like, bro. Throwing all that parsley on the mac and cheese is not gonna make it any better, bro. It's it's a little garnish for the look. Like that's <laughs> you're all you're doing too much. Right. So when everyone's calling Travis, like it's like you said, it's oversaturated. Um, yeah. And yeah, so then combine that with all these merch jigs, uh, bundle jigs. I'm just like, it's too much, bro. Like you you are a capable music maker. Like you don't have to do all this. And especially again for a ten year old mixtape, like, it was just it was a lot. It was too much. So yeah, um, I'm 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 uninter uninterested. Maybe. If you drop something that's like undeniable in a couple of years, I'll turn around. But right now, same. Trav's not moving me. Um, Metro Boomin. Metro Boomin recently uh, was interviewed by Forbes, Forbes uh, 30 Under 30. And they were talking about the rap beef, which is just so fascinating to me that he's having these conversations with Forbes. Because I think well, one of the complaints throughout the beef was like, Back in the day when rappers beef, they would go on radio stations and be talking about it. They would do freestyle, stuff like that. We didn't see anyone involved in it going and doing interviews and stuff. Like, it was all over the internet. And so Metro talking to Forbes, like, his first, like, public interview being with Forbes, the white guy, was just very interesting. But They probably paid for it. Yeah, you know how yeah, that yeah, 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 perhaps. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, he's talking about the rap beef, and he's just like, it was just entertainment to me, you know, um... I got love for all my collaborators and stand culture made it weird. And it reminded me of our conversation last week when we were talking about y'all being part of the Nigga League of please. Lamar and all that. <laughs> and, um, Nigga, please. And we, we were talking about gimmicks and he was promoting the project like, yeah, yeah, I got to pick a side. Like he was conditioning everyone to know this is going to be contentious. It's, things are going to get split. You need to be on one side or the other. So to blame it on stand culture, which he's not wrong. Stand culture does ruin a lot of mm -hmm. things. Stand culture is very annoying. We talk about it often. But to just remove the accountability from yourself when you were a catalyst for this, like you were throwing shots at Drake for like over a year before this project came out. And then when everyone else gets involved, Kendrick Ross, all of them, you're being a lot more aggressive on Twitter, the BBL Drizzy beat, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you, you that played was, a part in that was insane. these sorry. sides being split. <laughs> so to act like... It's on stand culture and to not, and I'm, I mean, I get it. Like, I, I wouldn't sit up there and be like, oh, yeah, like, this is my fault. I, I ruined things. Like, I get it, but it, it was just whack. Like, it was, it, it, people didn't seem to receive it well. Um, and I don't, for me personally, I know in rap beef, there are no rules, but you're calling someone a pedophile, like, you're putting that out in the world and people are like rocking with it. That's not that's beyond entertainment. Like that's not I, that I wouldn't find that entertaining. Like I wouldn't be cool with someone calling me that. So to act like, oh, it's just for the love of the game, it's entertainment. Like I don't know. I I I thought that was just very misguided. Very like he's just lacking awareness of what he participated in and created. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 
I, wasn't I think he was just like, just trying to, you know, be media trained. Yeah, hey, I think he was trying to keep it cute. I didn't, it's, it's Forbes, so he, I get it. He was yeah. trying to keep it's it Forbes. cute. Like, he can't be there, like, fuck that nigga Drake. Fuck, fuck Biggie. <laughs> fuck, like, he can't do that. <laughs> he definitely can't do that. Yeah. Um, And it was probably most likely a branded um story. Mm hmm. So you definitely had to keep it cute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw that and was just like I, I laughed because I felt like it was like a throwing stones and hiding hands mm-hmm. type of thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, they've been beefing for years. Drake has also been sneak dissing according to for all sure. the decoded lyrics for like sure. throughout the years. And um they did, you know, they band together to do the twenty V one or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. But the pedophile claims came from Kendrick, yeah, not absolutely. Metro. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I think Metro was just, I think everybody was just doing what they supposed to do. And he just answered because he was asked. I'm not even sure if he would have even mentioned it if he wasn't asked. But of course, mm-hmm. who's not going to ask him, especially a yeah. clout chasing white reporter? Yeah, these, <laughs> these opportunities don't come up a lot to talk to these guys. So. You feel me? It, it. it kind of just hit me and I just realized that we're really going to be talking about this beef until the Super Bowl. Yep. Yo, yeah. and that's like, like, it's like, it's shit, it's yeah. like, it's not, yeah. it's not going away anytime soon. And that's my birthday y'all. month. Like, please. Yeah. I'm it's trying like, to tell I'm, y'all, bro. It's about to be. <laughs> and with, with, with this podcast, it's like, we acknowledge. When we talk about that it stuff, just hit me like for real. our our numbers are better when we talk about it. But I'm I, I try to be very selective in what I bring to y'all because I'm tired of talking about it. And so dumb shit like an IG story, we're we're not gonna talk about that. But like this in particular, I was just like, okay, this is Metro's first public mm-hmm. interview type situation to talk about it. So I was like, okay, this is fine. But yes, we will be talking about this until February. Um, and beyond, and, and beyond, and not, and not just beyond. not just our show. I'm talking about every, like, yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah, 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 everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So this whole shit's gonna be until was it February 20th? Is it's hip hop history. Yeah, it, it's it, like, it is. It's it is. It's, be, it's yeah. one of the biggest moments. It's like mm-hmm. as much as mm-hmm. as much as it annoys me that people are still so obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. This is the biggest moment that we've gotten in hip hop since well, like before this. What? Drake, 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 and push. Me. <laughs> Drake oh, push, Drake push, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, maybe that, yeah, or Drake and Kendrick, uh, Kanye, um, Kanye briefly re- reconciling and doing that show for that Larry wasn't Hoover. That big because it, yeah, like you said, briefly, and people knew it was fake, too. yeah, um, yeah, that was, yeah, they know. said, put on your get along shirt. That was one of the <laughs> fakest concerts I've ever seen, but it was a fire ass concert, uh, it was dope, but yeah. it was one of the fakest, like, yeah, brothers hug right now, yeah, no, no. say you're sorry, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. like, yeah. Uh, J-, J-, J Prince had that had that, had that gun to their back. Like, nigga, you better smile. Say sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we we will be talking about it forever. Um, <laughs> which I get. I'm, yeah. I'm exhausted by it, but I get it. Literally today, I saw a video. Cause it's a media day for the NBA. A reporter asked uh, Z- Zion Williamson from the Pelicans. He was like, "Why wasn't Kendrick all on your playlist this summer? Like, he had two great songs you could have worked out to." And Zion's like. Nigga, why are you asking me this? Like, like my playlist is my playlist. Do Shout I gotta to him. do I gotta sit here and tell you Kendrick is a great artist? Like, I want to listen to what I want to listen to in the gym. And he got up and walked away from the press conference. I'm like, Period. bro, I love that because like this shit has made niggas so weird. There's yes. an obsession with it. It's people's personality traits. It's it's a little weird. Like, I get it, but it's weird. And on a media standpoint, I think it's like cheesy to be a reporter to mm-hmm. constantly oh, yeah. try to get like you know a sound bite yes. from that moment yeah like when my denzel interview went viral you know how many people asked him about damson after that mm-hmm. and i'm like yo get off my dick yeah no like, I, I hate that i absolutely hate that like that's one thing i try not to do when i'm interviewing someone who's been interviewed before like i watch interviews so i know all right same. let me not ask something that's been asked already same. like because there's no need to do it because like, they hate it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's nothing like, damn, that's a good question. I've never been I asked that before. I love when they say that. I'm like, bag, yeah, so. I do my job. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, the era we live in. So get ready for more quotes, more IG stories, more mm. more, more AI, more all that. We are we are in the Kendrick Lamar Drake world. <laughs> um, speaking of, <laughs> more comments on it. Um, Hitmaker posted an Instagram story today. I'm, I'm going to read this quote to y'all, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Kendrick and Drake shit really fucked the game up because now there's no more bar slash standard. Don't nobody got nothing to aim at or copy off of. Now the hottest rappers in the game are women besides Future and ain't no nigga running home to make a beat or song in competition with a woman. Thoughts? What? I don't even understand what he's saying. I'm sorry, like, what? 
I didn't get Thank it either. Thank you. I thought I thought I was like I thought I was gonna be the only person like not understanding. I'm glad everybody doesn't understand. What I don't understand what, what the, the fuck he's yeah, saying. What the fuck like, did he just said? Like some little points in there. Like women are running the game, but that's been happening before Kendrick yeah. and Drake and niggas. Ben ain't have no inspo and Ben ain't doing shit. Like the beef is actually the most exciting thing that has happened recently and yeah. low key like. That's why we're still talking about mm -hmm. it. So yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. And yeah. the producers are part of the problem. So maybe he stopped with them lazy samples. <laughs> like, what the hell? That, that was, he don't make no sense. <laughs> he, he had me, like, briefly in the first half. Like, right. Like, if, if, if he stopped that Kendrick and Drake really fucked the game up, perfect statement. <laughs> perfect statement. <laughs> it would have been. Everything after that, there's no bar slash standard. I mean, yes, I mean, in hip-hop, they're, they're but currently... But that got nothing to do with that? Yeah, that, that was before the beef, like you said. Don't nobody got nothing to aim at or copy off of. Mm. You literally copy all the beats that you do, Young Berg. Yeah, like I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think Kendrick and Drake robbed the game of the various inspirations that are out there. Um, so that's a weird point. Hottest rappers in the game are women. Besides Future, the women are cooking right now. And is Future really still hot for real? Or it's just like the we we will get to that when we talk mixtape Pluto. Yeah, ain't no nigga running home to make a beat or song in competition with a woman. Yes, that's that's true. So he 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 kind of like threw paint at a wall, and a couple of of the ink of the paint blots like made something <laughs> that looks cool, and yeah. the rest of it is just a mess. Um, it's like little shirt. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> it's a nice shirt. Though. This is a I nice love shirt. it. This is a polo. This is, this is, I know it's so that's it's that, so that, New York. You look like a real that's New that York polo nigga Ralph right Lauren, now. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, him like then cool guy. I interviewed him in the past. Um, I don't know what the fuck you talking about, bro. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, you, like Kendrick and Drake shit definitely did fuck the game up. And actually, I didn't get to talk about this with y'all. Uh, it was it was when Fergie was here, but like, you know, we were constantly talking about the numbers and how numbers are down. And it's an infrastructure thing. Labels aren't prioritizing, prioritizing rap anymore. And also a lot of the talent we feel like just isn't up to par. How much of that do you think has to do with this beef? Nothing. Nothing. This has yeah, been going on to way like, before like, the beef. Yeah, like, because that's one of those things that's like, they're so big. Like, Drake and Kendrick are so big that whatever the fuck they got going on and up there mm -hmm. is not affecting what these, I don't know, new signees or new artists or whatever they're trying to, like, figure out. I don't, I just don't see that. And if it is, then that's a fucking problem. Wasn't well, niggas pushing their projects back while this shit was happening? Which like, was corny, too. Like, I just, like... I mean, they, no one was going to pay attention anyway. Of course. So I get yeah. it. But, like... But do, do, do you guys feel like... Uh, this is how I feel. I feel like they split the the music community. It's like, like, the whole pick a side thing, people really pick sides. Yeah. And artists are being... Like very like apprehensive about who they collaborate with, who they are seen with, all that, just for the sake of like, yo, if I do this, Drake might not fuck with me. If I do this, Kendrick side might not fuck with me. Like shit like that. And it's created this divide within hip hop to where like it's kind of easy for the systems to not prioritize us as much because like we don't even have it all together ourselves. In a way, does that, mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, they profit off of that shit. They love when we're at odds. They love when we killing each other. Yeah. They love that shit. Yeah. So I won't say that they're really causing a dichotomy. I mean, stand culture is mm -hmm. annoying and shit. And there are people like when I saw Angel Reese, like basically say that she don't like Nikki because she was in the put it on the floor video. I'm like, girl, stop. I'm trying to like you. <laughs> like, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like, don't like just it's music. I don't even understand what like people's personalities have to do with you enjoying the music you know yeah, it's weird but but people do it like they people, do it. people have done it people have picked sides do it. and drake and kendrick like their fan bases there is some overlap there and i think now it's just like it's very you're here you're here there's not much like no, normal people can still listen to both and be fine but i think we we're seeing a growing population of not normal niggas who who pick sides and are pushing this negativity. It's like, I don't know. I think about myself as a music fan. It's like the the songs in the beef are great, but like I don't listen to diss songs all the time. Right. Like I I like other shit by them, and people have really like latched on to these to where it's just like it's all they care about. So I don't know. It's it's weird. It's weird. I, I talk about it with my boys like a lot because we're seeing Shibuzi. Still number one with the country song. We've seen all these pop stars like hit the 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 Billboard Hot 100, the Billboard 200. It has never been so devoid of hip hop. Like we we're in such a 
just a hot period of hip hop for the last like nine years. And now it's like no one is stepping up because it's funny. You, you were talking about how like people push their products back during the beef. It's like ever since the beef, like what was the last significant hip hop project we got? And it's like this shit is wide open right now. Like like in, ideally someone would step up and put something out. But everyone's kind of like waiting, like sitting on their hands. Like To be frank with you, I do think that they're like this is the first time in hip hop history that like. You know, the movers and the shakers just haven't really been in control of mm-hmm. or, like, have ownership, you know, from a music standpoint. I mean, from a music business standpoint, I always say, like, drug dealer-funded hip-hop is way better than corporate hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Because now you have, like, you know, someone who inherited their parents' fortune and now they're running a music company mm-hmm. and don't know the first or last thing about it, mm-hmm. like, you know, and there's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. And with social media, it's not like there's someone who can tell you what was done before. We're yeah. all experiencing it for the first time ever. So, yeah. like, I thought about when the City Girls was talking about their uh, rollout for Raw. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, they were like, yeah, we've been wanting to drop these songs a year ago, but our label said no. And I'm like, damn, artists don't leak their shit no more. <laughs> like, we don't have artists who even want it. Yeah. One. We don't have executives who are skilled or experts to who love music. Who, <laughs> yo, we don't even have experts who are music fans anymore. Yeah. Like for real. So, uh, the executives aren't music fans. Um, journalism, you know, an artist is only as hot as a journalist says. But with all this branded content, you can't post certain shit. You can't say certain shit. You can't talk about certain people. Mm-hmm. It's like exploited beyond repair. I yeah. feel like, and they have they have, artists have so much autonomy to where they don't need to talk to journalists anymore, or they think they don't need they to think, talk to yeah. journalists anymore, and so they're creating their own narrative. So you're you're sold something, and then when you experience it for yourself, you're like, wait, this wasn't what you made me think you were. Like, yep. So yeah, it's 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 wild times. It's it's very wild times. But yeah, I don't know. I think I think March to May that period we experienced, it did change things. Like in a like forever like i don't know i don't know if that's dramatic or something but that's just that's how i've been feeling hip-hop is just very that's how i feel about the girls weird i'm like i feel like nikki the only one causing divide i love her so much but that's how i feel about female rap you can really trace everything back to her which is crazy like we're never gonna talk about rap it's always gonna be pre or post nikki and if she don't like you child you better pick yeah so it's like, I feel that way about female rap, but I don't know about male rap because I can't even name a hot male rapper and not even future. So. Yes. <laughs> Great trans transition. So <laughs> um, future mixtape Pluto is out. 17 track album project, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> no features. Who wants to start? Because I have many thoughts. I have none. I have none. I just don't believe what anybody's saying about the project. That's all I have to say. I don't believe y'all. What did what are what are people? What are, what? They're raving about it and praising it and calling it. Okay. Dude. There's been a okay. lot of love for it. Lots I've, I've of love. I've seen people say it's for the day one future fans. I, mean, but that's, but that, I don't believe. But like, them. but like, but that, that's what we. That's what. That's what. I, that's what we said. And the last time I said when we was talking about oh this like mixtape Pluto mm-hmm. we said it was like you like we looked at the cover and everything it's like it's for the bando trap mixtape future fans I I felt like the branding and the music didn't match personally but go ahead. listen only song I really listened to is the last song the ASA gang shit mm-hmm. that shit is crazy I really haven't listened to anything else and mm-hmm. that Plutoski shit is getting on my nerves I haven't, I haven't listened I haven't listened to that for real I, mean, like, I just hear and he performed it recently like God. I'm just like, yo, I think Future, he just did that new deal that we spoke about on the last episode. And now he knows that he's going to get the streams. Like, when I went to him at Metro show, I should look like Rolling Loud in the mm-hmm. audience. I'm like, what the hell is all these little white boys doing here? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I just think he's just trying to get his coin. He got mad kids, so he got to get some money. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he sold his catalog like, yeah. last year. So, like, it's, it's... But that, that was only recordings from, like, I think 2012 yeah. to 2020. Which is a nice little deal. Yeah, nice and so now show. he's got new... uh, his his own, like, label, mm-hmm. w- Wilburn Holdings. Mm-hmm. Music is licensed to Epic. Right. Um, he's just recouping right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Man, so I heard this at the listening I told you about. Oh, yes. And you know how you you go to album listenings, you know, food, liquor, just the vibe. Like, everything sounds good at listenings. Like, I've, I've never been to a listening and been like, mm, 
this ain't moving me. Big speakers, just just Damn, just, I'm strict. just the whole just the whole vibe <laughs> of the situation. I'm not gonna cap though, and and the, 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 they had sweet chick for us, they had champagne. Oh, I was I was I would have enjoyed the album too. You feel me? Like I was in there, like okay, oh no, but just just wait, <laughs> let, let me get there, let me land. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, they they start playing the album. I, I hear the intro, I'm like, okay. Songs keep going one by one by one. It took me it took me a while to get to a song where I was like, I fuck with this. Like it took me a while to get there. And the album kind of finishes and I'm like, hmm. Didn't really move me. I was very unmoved. Very, very unmoved. And so the project finally comes out and I'm seeing the the talk on the timeline. Uh, mixed reviews are common, but this was probably the most negativity that I've seen for a future project in a long time. But then it's like the other side of the spectrum. Some people are like, yo, I like this more than we don't trust you and we still don't trust you. I'm seeing niggas say, yo, this this for the day one future fans. Like, like that nigga was in his bag, blah, 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 all I this. So I'm just like, I'm like. I didn't even see any negative comments, to be honest. I, 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 saw, I, I did. saw a few. I did. But... I, I saw some. But yeah, the day one future fans thing is funny because for me, okay, you, you fell for the branding, mixtape Pluto. But mm. this music, it don't sound any different from shit we've gotten over the last few years like and i've been listening to future for a long time this don't even sound like early future like i it's it just sounds like 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 the future starter pack like trap beats you know he he, he might give you like something a little slower he might give you something faster you know he'll give you like a catchy hook like you know one word that he just repeats over and over like i, I was like <laughs> w- w- what are y'all getting from this compared to what he's given recently that is and that is any different that makes you say nah this for the day one future fans besides n- n- no features okay like the product is by himself okay fine but even that, like early on, he he was working with a bunch of niggas too. So I'm like, what 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 does that mean? To me, it sounded like one of those things niggas say to like qualify why like niggas don't like a project. It's like, no man, like you you you're not gonna trick me. Like, oh, this is not for me because I'm not a day one future fan. Like, no nigga, if, this, this shit not good. It's not. Like this really revealed how easily impressed some people are. Yes. And and we were talking about it. Um, my my boy J Five made a great point. Like. Think back to when Future dropped uh, Evol in 2016 or High Off Life in 2020 and how niggas were twisting and c- contorting their bodies to just not admit Future dropped a mid-project. Niggas love Future, the persona, so much yep. that they will not ever say, nah, this shit's not good. 100%. He, he's got Fuck. this this character, this aura, all that. It's like, he well, day I, daddy. I, I, right. Okay. Like, I, I love Future. Where's the lie? Future yeah. is, is one of my favorite artists ever. But if some shit mid or not good, I, I I gotta own up to that. I don't revisit High Off Life. Why? Because it wasn't good to me. I don't really re- revisit Evo. I got a couple joints on there, but I just don't go, don't go to it. And so listening to these songs, they just felt very lifeless. Mm-hmm. Like it, it felt like he was just going through the motions. I was just like, bro, what? Because like even like he's done these flows and these pockets and these cadences before, but they had more swagger to them. They had more juice to them. This just felt like. Something he had to do. I, I saw someone tweet like, "Yo, that future album is like the album you make when you try to get out of a deal. Like, like you just you just put it out, but you don't really care about it." That and is. it was like the rollout was pretty like underwhelming. Like he just gave us the cover art. He'd been doing like, that for the and past, tweeting. He'd been yeah. doing that for the past five drops though. Like, yeah, delete all my pictures. R I G. Yeah, then drop the cover. I'm and just it's like, like I'm back. I'm bored. Team. I'm like, yo, what? Like my nigga. What, what, what happened to my guy? And it was like, you need some it, new creative direction. Or it something. brings me back to what we talked about when we were talking about the project before it came out. It was like, maybe I would have received this better if it came out next year. Like, nope. if 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 I had some time away from, we don't trust you. We still don't trust you. Everything that that created, maybe I would have received it better. I'm like, nah. Even still, I I don't think so. He hasn't been dropping good projects. I like the first two. I, I don't love them. They ain't really stick on me, but I I thought they were better. But Metro's involved too. Metro just created this like soundscape mm-hmm. for him. Like exactly. And on, on this album, he he had Southside. He had um, ATL Jacob did a record. He he um, linked up with was it was Esco? I think Esco might have been on it. Like he he worked with producers who he's made heat with before. So I'm just like, what the fuck went wrong here? Like <laughs> like this, this shit is it, it's it's not it. And I, I revisited it today because I knew we were gonna talk about it and. I ended up saving like a couple more records, but it really just made me want to go back and listen to The Wizard or go go back and listen to Self Titled or go back and listen to Dirty Sprite the good too. Shit. Like <laughs> the shit that just had energy to it, the shit that had passion to it, the shit that felt like like 
nigga was making music while, while, like his rent was due. He had to pay his rent or like he had a paper due at midnight and it was eleven fifty nine. Like he was just locked into a different zone. This felt comfortable. This felt lazy. I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, and just to see people just so un and I, I get it, music is subjective. That's fine. But we must have been hearing two different albums for y'all niggas to say that somebody said this is the best future project since Hendrix. Excuse me? I'm like, and what? And I love that album. What? He needs to drop another Hendrix. He dropped th- Wizard in 2019. I think that's one of his best albums he's ever made. Wizard was good. I loved Wizard. I just feel that that statement was a reach. Insane. Absolutely insane, insane. to me. Um, so yeah, I was I was very underwhelmed. Extremely underwhelmed. And I'm I'm, I'm seeing Plutowski is like getting momentum because t- TikTok like niggas are like making something out of that. <laughs> I hate that. I, yo, when I heard that at the listening, I was like, is that Playboy card? Is this nigga moaning on the song? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, no, this is not it. And I hate that it's catching on. Like, I I I, I really hate that it's catching on. Like, it's it's actually bothering me. Like, no, you, you, you niggas, nerves. yeah, you niggas are so easily impressed. Yep. you niggas will take anything. Yep. <laughs> you will take anything. <sighs> but being that this music space is so weird, the product did go number one on Billboard. Jesus. Um, I think like 129k. Pure sales were only 10,000, so Future was bundling. Got to acknowledge that Future was bundling. This shit is going to drop crazy next week. And Sabrina's still cooking, so she could easily get that number one number one back. Um, so, hey, Future, three number one albums in one year. As as one of my favorite artists, I'm happy for you for that. The actual music itself, I, I don't see myself ever going back to this album. And, like, that's the thing. Future always got one. He always got one banger At least. On, on his project. I don't know what the banger is here. I'm seeing niggas Plutoski. talking about. <sighs> hell no. The, please, <laughs> the, don't play Plutoski at any parties I'm at. Please it's that don't. A-Say gang, I'm trying to tell you. A-Say a- gang is good. That's, that's a good that's record. Hard, that's man. a good record. Uh, it's like some, like, I need a car. I need to buy a car to play that song. Ski, I really liked. Ocean, I, I did really like. Too Fast. It, it just felt, ah, man, I don't know. Everything sounds like something he's already put out, but just not as good as what was first put out. That's that's ultimately how I felt. Future? That's ultimately how I felt, and it's fun. I, I'm I saw niggas say, "Yo, it's present." Twenty twenty four future is feeling like twenty fifteen future. I was like, "I will throw hammers at you." People, what? People be lying. What? People lie so the much. The same year where he dropped Beast Mode, Monster, Dirty Sprite Two, What a Time to Be Alive, Fifty Six Nights. You, you you saying this year feels like that? Like you're bugging. What? The nigga gave us like fifteen hits in twenty fifteen. This year he got what three like that type shit. I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. W- 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 what are we talking about? And like that as a collab. Yeah, I, I'm. I am just. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. So yeah, mixtape Pluto was not it for me. We definitely not make my end of year list. Um, I mean, future yeah. sells misogyny, so yeah. it's gonna work out for him. It's, it's no matter how him. trash it is, because. Niggas be so misogynist that they yeah. can't the nigga say was, that is whack. The nigga was wearing overalls on 125th. With no shirt under. <laughs> With no shirt under. <laughs> and niggas was acting like they saw fucking... Like, it's like, yeah, it's just... I just, I, like, I, I, I guess. He looked like Rob from Love Island. Bro, and he's like, how old? Whatever. That's I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> uh, the other thing I saw to, to piggyback off of, like, Future and how people love this character he's created, some niggas say, yo, I just listen to that future and like now I hate women. I'm like, you don't understand future at all. Like, does, has future mistreated women and does he no, sing he about a that? Trick. Yes, but he 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 loves he has a very complicated love and affinity for a woman. He doesn't hate women. So if you're taking it as that, this toxic king meme has gone too far. Yeah, bro. Yes. If, if niggas, like, if niggas yes. is still saying that type of shit, they low key lame bro, and like corny. Like, every bro. single low time key. Future's about like, to drop a project, it's, like, it's, like, it's just that meme of Spider Man putting his his suit in the garbage and like toxicity of the caption. I'm like, yo, grow up, bro. Bro, it's like you bro. are 37. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all be out here 37 with My kids, nigga. Talking about, oh, Whole I families. can't wait to be toxic. That, that new future, I'm about to be toxic. Nigga, what? See, I can't wait to I can't wait to disrespect a, a woman like, bro, this weekend. What, like, what's good with y'all? Yeah. Like, bro, can, are y'all serious? On? No, that's real life. Are y'all serious? Because you're you, you going to be sorry when a nigga disrespect you for disrespecting, like, bro. Yeah. Niggas ain't even doing that, y'all. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah, those are our thoughts on Mixtape Pluto. Uh, definitely let us know how y'all feel about it. Um, but, yeah, I don't see myself going back to that project at all. <laughs> at all. Um, let's jump into another person who was involved in the 20v1 although he withdrew himself um j cole has been back active in these streets uh he had two feature verses recently uh he was on daylight's plate of collard greens we know that daylight is an affiliate of kendrick lamar 
and TDE. And he was on T Grizzly's Blow for Blow. How, how do we feel about the tracks? I didn't even know. Yo, I be lost. Is it just me? I, just, I be seeing posts of new songs, and mm-hmm. I don't be aware that they are out. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if I be lost in the sauce or too high or what, but, like, I got to run that back. No, I feel you. I, I, J. Cole's been doing, like, a little kind of weird feature run mm-hmm. recently where, you know, even, like, him doing the Cash Cobain Dunk Contest remix, <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. And that he just did that. He yeah. just he just wanted like he like he had to get that out. Mm-hmm. It was kind of it was like crazy. Like he had to put that out to the world. Like yeah. okay, Rippy. yeah, like grippy, it's, whatever. It's. And then <laughs> yeah, it's like come on, bro. And then like you know the day list stuff. And then T Grizzly like Rocky too. Yeah, he's doing a lot of Thames a couple months ago. Yo, yeah, he's, he's very he's, 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 he's like he's soft like, launching himself back exactly into in the his space. Like, and he kind of played it in a smart way. It's like mm-hmm. the grippy shit. I didn't like it, but it was like it's so bad that it's like catchy. It's fun. It was fun. Like, it's, like, it's like fun, quirky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it was like nursery rhyme. It showed a different side. It showed it showed a different side to like it's like a lot of people look at J Cole as you know rapidy rap serious yeah. stuff, and that kind of just oh uh, kind of like oh he's kind of like us. He likes. Mm-hmm. Women and Rippy. stuff too. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah. like oh, he, nigga like, pussy. He, like, he likes. Oh, he likes that stuff too. We don't like, hear that enough. No, we don't. Toe. like dead ass, bro. Like we don't yeah. hear that from him. Like. It's interesting. I feel like so, I feel like it might have been received better if he didn't bow out the beef. Like and that didn't come like a month or two after. But it it was also cool because it kind of like people got their jokes out, and they, then they just they just moved on from him. Mm-hmm. And then he did the record with Thames. Like you're not gonna. Like, are you gonna give J. Cole shit for working with Thames? Like, no. Like that's that, that's just cool. It's it's cool to see she collected another Infinity Stone. Um, and it was a good verse, a good song. Um, but now he's back rapping with aggression, with confidence. And as someone, I, I remember when we talked about the the timeline of the beef. I was like, I didn't even listen to Mike Delete later because he pissed me off so much. <laughs> I went back to it a couple months later. Really good project. People would just never know because. The whole seven minute drill controversy, but Mike's Elite Later was really good. One of my favorite rap projects this year. And so we know he still has it in him, but his perception is fucked up. So Play the Collar Greens, the Rocky track, Blow for Blow, all really good verses. He's talking to shit though. I became the goat off features, like shit like that, like cool wordplay, all that. But I think the thing to really pay attention to and what people have been talking about is like who he's been working with. Rocky and Daylight. We know what side Rocky picked. We know who Daylight is affiliated with. They were talking about it on the, on, uh, the Rory and Maul podcast. And Rory was like, yo, like, is this something we should be paying attention to? And Maul flat out was like, Drake essentially, like, he's not fucking with niggas no more. And niggas know that. And so niggas are choosing up. And for Cole, it's working with all these people who were opposed to Drake in some way. And I'm just like, damn, like. <sighs> Shout out to that year and a half we had of Drake and Cole being besties. We got first person shooter. We got evil ways. First we got the tour. Fuck. Right. And now it's shooter. over already. Like this beef, fuck it. It's ruining everything. Like, or maybe Drake is the problem. He's the common denominator in all of these <sighs> things. And Kendrick told us that he did Cole foul. So he was pretending. That's that's the other thing, is we don't know what he was alluding to. Um, so that's like I'm 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 curious what he meant by doing Drake Cole will foul. Fuck anybody's bitch. That and you is, can tell. That, 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 that is something that we've heard. You can tell. A lot of people. That right there is the most dangerous man in the world. What Seriously. camera? What camera? Is it this camera? <laughs> that, yeah, is this thing on? Is this thing on? A nigga that will do that is the most dangerous man in the world. Yeah. And it's the problem. Yeah. And you know what? That's how niggas die. You yeah. know what? You, 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 you know, wait, hold on a second, Ma. I, 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 hold on a second. If you ever stayed up late with your mom and watched, like, um, true crime TV or whatever the fuck, mm. there's always a nigga fucking another nigga's wife mm. that ends up getting killed. Yeah. That's how you die. You don't, bro, you don't fuck niggas' girls, bro. You don't fuck niggas' wives. You don't do that. You don't do that type of stuff. War yeah. start over that shit, my yeah, nigga. no, it's it's Beginning real. of time type shit, bro. I swear to God, don't do not do that shit, bro. I've, I've ended friendships over niggas who are who done do that shit, shit that they, they don't need to do. Yeah. With women that I've been involved with. It's yeah. just like. Cause it, it, it's a different type of line. Yeah, it's just like wh- where you're more. There's so many women in the world. Why, why you gotta come and try to fuck behind me yep. and slide me out while trying to do it Shh. and fail? Like, like you, you didn't Epically. even succeed either. Like, <laughs> and you, you was really like going for it and you failed. Like, that's that's a whole other story. But yeah, like that's something we've heard about Drake. That's something I. I, I I don't know, so I'm not going to defend it. But it's it's a story we've heard enough he to where it's to like fucking Wayne's girl. So if he can do that, he can do anything. Well. Wayne wasn't dating her when they fucked. It doesn't matter. Were you dating those girls when your man slimed you out? I had 
I had, so my situation was my, my ex, we were together for years. We, we, we were broken up. The nigga tried behind my back. Why I was broken up? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's the whole point I just made. That's scary. But no, no, but, but Drake that's fucked scary. her before Wayne and her started dating. No, Wayne was in jail when they fucked. Yes, but like they started dating after so that he, was... he got out of jail. So it's different. Like mm-hmm. when Wayne, it Wayne wrote about it in in his memoir. Like 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 it. Kendrick made it sound like something that it wasn't. But Drake getting a tattoo of Wayne on his face at like it was it was easy to kind of construct it in that way, frame it that way. Drake is the problem though. Y'all, there's what, too many you, people pointing the finger at him. Y'all are way more deeper into like. Like the Drake and like and like the like this like we the just lore. Shit. Like, 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 no, like, yeah, y'all niggas, y'all niggas, y'all niggas, y'all niggas are deep in the lore. Like, 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 wait, right. what the fuck? This nigga no, said, wait, he got a tattoo of what? Hold on, wait, what Hold did you on. say? Will don't know what it's like to have to write the motherfucking yeah. I don't. stories. I don't. I don't. I don't. Looking for stories. We Yo, go by. We go down crazy rabbit holes. I don't I bet write. Y'all do, I don't bro. even write anymore, and my algorithm is still tailored to that shit. Like I don't write anymore. Damn, yeah. so like, wait, wait, so like, so like, what's your like timeline? Like, it's like, it's just like hella like little like rap, like yes. lore yeah. type shit that like yeah. you yes. click on it, it might like. I have to block them. Yeah. Especially it's, it's the barbs. Yo, these, these threads, <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Threads explaining the history of. Yeah. Like hella like Drake threads and, and shit. And, like, three, and, like yeah. crazy yeah, like nuts. It's, like, it's a lot. One and, like, time YouTube, I did a no, list. No, that's fire shit. actually. That's kind of that's kinda crazy. Yeah, that's why we don't have to look. Y'all like a Lord of the Rings of like, or like Game of Thrones of like rap music. It's overstimulating. But we're also trained to know what to look for and how to verify information. Y'all went to school for this shit. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I I don't sit up here and do theories and rumors. Like if I'm saying things, it's because I've I saw I've report, studied it enough or I've heard it directly from someone. Um, but yeah, that's that. Finally, um, the weekend and Playboy Cardi dropped a new track, Timeless. How'd y'all feel about Timeless? It's cool. That's it. <laughs> Just cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Uh. This nigga will love that shit. He no, no, loved no, no, it. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a Cardi <laughs> nigga over there. You love that shit. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. The Cardi shit was cool. I can't believe Weekend. Weekend's verse was kind of crazy. Like, uh, if you guys listen to the Weekend's verse, it was just very. It was. I was like, oh, this nigga's like, I like. I was like, he's trying to like play around with like the rap pop shit. And then like, if you like listen to his verse, he's like actually like snapping. I was like, okay, and it it was it was good. It was. I'm gonna listen. It was mm-hmm. better than what I. It was like it 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 brought me back to like maybe like some. Some old weekend where he was like, you know, dropping like tracks with like Drake and like or like um and like kind of rapping a little bit, doing the rapping singing thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I I liked it. I liked it. It was cool. Yeah, Thomas was and it's it is catchy. Like the, cool. the like yeah, it's like it's, it's like cool. It's, cool. it's cool. It's like a cool like yeah. yeah. I really like Playboy Cardi's part. This mm-hmm. was this was his pocket. Like mm-hmm. I kind of would have liked if it was just him. We can. <laughs> Weekend has songs like this in the past he's done that I really liked. I liked Reminder. Yep, that's what it is. Low Life mm-hmm. with Future. Uh, this that's sounds like one like. of his future, old future, future like. type tracks. Like, like. Um, All She Knows, I think it's called. And, um, that's a good one. Uh, the other shit on Starboy that I'm forgetting right now. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It just, like, it didn't move me too much. And he's going, th- he's in this weird spot. So we've been talking about how, like, he's not hot right now. Like, he's been kind of cold musically. Started with Dancing in the Flames, which I really liked. Numbers wise, mm-hmm. it's not doing too hot. He comes comes with the Cardi record next. Very strategic. Cardi is one of the guys right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, damn, you run into Cardi for the, the second single. You ain't even let Dancing in the Flame cook like that. You already come <laughs> up with another one. Word. And at first I was like, is he having identity problems? But then I look back at like the Starboy rollout. He gave us Starboy, which is like a hip hop pop type record. But then he gave us False Alarm, which is some like 80s pop dance type stuff and then he gave I Feel It Coming which was his Michael Jackson uh, impression I mean his whole career is damn near a Michael Jackson impression but like the, that record was very Michael-esque with Daft Punk and then you look at like After Hours he gave you Heartless a Metro Boomin track like hip hop type stuff Blinding Lights one of the best selling the best selling song ever bro that shit um, is like oh my god After man. Hours the, the title track like that's more moody R&B type stuff so he he typically rolls out a rolls out his albums giving people like a buffet like this is for the hip-hop fans this is for the pop people so mm-hmm. it's not necessarily identity this is like what he's been doing but it, i don't know this time around it just feels like a very like quick pivot because the first song didn't catch on like starboy caught on crazy but then false alarm caught on like he, he was just hotter at the time now it's like you immediately run to cardi for the single like he, he know he a lot of his singles 
typically didn't have features. No. I will say what the weekend is trying to do, nobody's really kind of doing anymore. Mm-hmm. And um just like he's like he's about to end a second trilogy. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that you're world building that crazy the first time, and then you did it again. Yeah. And you're trying to close it off in a world that like people attention spans are like that. That's hard to do. And like people might just be like it might be so, like like Sabrina's time. Like people mm-hmm. like don't want like it's like it's like you know weekends hard. Like that shit was cool. Yeah. But people might just be tired of it, bro. And, and or maybe like the idea has to flush out completely mm-hmm. because it's 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 hard for what he's trying to do, bro. Yeah. It's hard, bro. Like especially in like this day and age, like world building. Like oh yeah, I'm doing a second trilogy. I remember when people were like, "What is he doing with this?" I'm like, "Bro, he's doing another trilogy." Mm-hmm. And he just like it's like it's just like slowly building. And yeah. Like then he announces like, "Yeah, this is the last one of this," and then it's about to be like I don't know what he's about to do after this. And it all makes sense. Like mm-hmm. after hours, dawn FM, mm-hmm. hurry up tomorrow. It's the consistent mm-hmm. time theme. Like mm-hmm. there's a theme to it. Yeah. I'm just interested in musically where it's going. Yeah, I don't go. know what he's about to do, bro. Because it went over my head that he was even doing that. Because, mm. like you said, he's not that hot as he mm. was anymore. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I'm boy. not mad at it though, but that's also not a weekend thing. I just think it's just like the music culture mm-hmm. as a whole. Yeah, it's yeah. like tough right now, but it's mm-hmm. hard. Yeah, like yeah. So, really like Playboy's part. Weekend was kind of whatever. Um, Again, another one of my favorite artists, so I'm going to tap in. I'm interested in what where the direction the album is going to go, but I feel like he's not struggling, but if if it, this is like a, a race and track and the gun just went off, he's he's getting off to, to a stumble, kind of. Um, well, he is in his tenure. It's hard to be hot yeah, for as true. long that's as like, he's has, he has been. That's the other thing. Yeah, it's, it's like insane, we've bro. seen <laughs> so many anomalies, people who have been hot yeah. for a while, that when they start to slow up, it's like a shock because we're just used to them being mm-hmm. hot for so long. Yeah. It's like, this is not normal. Like, the average rap career, average peak would be like four Three or five, five years. years. Yeah. yeah. And these niggas have, you know, outlasted that. And it's yeah. just like, you kind of expect that longevity to stay. But, yeah, I think we're getting to a point where it's like, mm. it's It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, too, because, like... Did y'all like? Did you like the Starboy album? And, like, I loved stuff? it. Like I it's crazy. Starboy. Like I, I feel like I missed those and like got like I like I was a big Weekend fan when he first came out. House mm-hmm. Balloon House stuff, Balloons. and then it's like, kind of just like it just weared off a little bit, and I kind of like just uh. But a lot of people do say like they love Starboy. They love yeah. all that stuff in between, and like I kind of got back on late again, and like going back and listening to those. Like I see why people like love those. Yeah. Like, He's been around for a long ass time. A long like my last year of high school type shit. Like literally, like, like House of Balloons transports me to a time. Mm-hmm. Like I can like picture myself on mm-hmm. my mom's desktop. Yeah, my yeah exactly. Like, like yeah, literally was in the crib doing homework. It's listening crazy. To yep. Everybody can remember the, the first the time party. listening to that, bro. Yeah. Everybody can remember where they are the first like, time. Who listening is to that. this weekend, nigga, bro? I thought it was yeah. a band. I, I yeah, yeah I, I, I thought it was a group. I thought it was a group too, bro. I I remember playing my Xbox 360. I downloaded this shit. Like, I was playing. I was like, bro, what is this? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. This sounds amazing, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what this nigga's doing, but okay. Um, I want to pr- bring something to y'all, because I remember when we talked about the Idol, you both were fans of that show. Mm-hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, as always, I was in my group chat talking about Weekend, and um, a couple guys felt like the Idol has affected his perception, like, because of how controversial his character was. And then how how he like doubled down on it in interviews, like I don't remember his exact commentary, but it was very much so like combative towards the fans who were critiquing the show. And it's like I get it from his perspective. You're defending something that you invested time into, like this is your content. But the character, and if if you think about Weekend himself, like he's a very sex driven dude, drugs within the music industry, all that. And so it's like. Was he playing a character? Was he being himself? And have people received that well? Like, has it changed how people see him? So, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think he's Tedros in real life. <laughs> I don't think. I, yeah, I don't think. I, he is. I think he knows a Tedros. Facts. Mm. I feel like I feel like there's a few around him probably. Yeah, mm. I don't think he's Tedros in real life. Um, I don't understand the hate for that show. Mm. <laughs> I don't understand it. I felt like it was, or maybe, I feel like I was biased because it depicts the industry that we all work in. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed watching it, but... 
You know why? Go ahead, now. Go ahead. Do, do, you, then, do you think it was an accurate depiction of the industry? That's Absolutely. The That's the thing. That's why people don't like it. Because they don't know the real. Because that shit was it, yeah, true. It's like, it's, like, it's like that. It's like people that don't know the real and people that are in, in the industry, like, why are you showing this? You shouldn't be showing this because they know that's what's really going on, mm-hmm. bro. Like, that shit. Freak off. Like, it was crazy. Kids living shit, with them. It was, like, it, was, it, was, it was like, that's why when people say, like, I want to see that continue because i just want to see how it plays out Me just because it's just like especially because um what was her name again jocelyn yeah like yeah. she was equal yeah bro <laughs> like all these people like it, it's like it, it was it was very it was a great show it was a polarizing show and, it was, and it, it, i feel like i it scared enjoyed people. it, it i good, enjoyed though. it a lot i'm trying to think of it from the the perspective of, of a casual mm-hmm. viewer yeah they wouldn't get it who yeah who might be like it would turn you the jarred off, by bro. it who might be like I don't want to say disgusted, but kind of like, oh yeah, my no, God. That's, like, a, good saying, like, that's yes. a good word for it, bro. Yeah. It was a bunch of homeless, hungry artists yes. that he sold dreams to mm-hmm. and found a pop star found who was on that, some yeah. Britney Spears shit mm-hmm. and was trying to leverage her to like become this music mogul. And they, and, they that, took, and, and they took it to the next level. And the show literally ends at them taking it to the next level. That's mm-hmm. why it's like, damn. Cause like it ends at like them doing like the biggest show of her career, yeah. And it's like it's all led up to that moment, and then like she, I guess she kicked him away. If I remember, they kicked. She like got rid of him for a little bit, and then he returns for like the last show, mm-hmm. and it's like she stole his artist. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what happened. And yeah. Shorty could sing her ass off. Yeah. I, Nigga, listen, that show was crazy, bro. That show was crazy. <laughs> it was just like it was just it was just nuts, and it was it was just cool to see because we don't we don't get a lot of shows like that about our industry that are like that baseline real and like baseline real but also baseline fantasy too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was very like right in the middle of like it kind of blurred the lines. Mm-hmm. And niggas don't good. appreciate art. They don't. Like they don't appreciate art. Like if one of my favorite <laughs> artists is starring in a movie or like, a show, what? like I'm gonna be tapped in. I'm gonna yeah. try to understand. I'm gonna, like I remember when 50 Cent dropped the Get Rich or Die Trying movie. Oh like, my God. It's like like, I don't know. I don't understand these new fans. I feel like I'll be having to teach my little cousin, like, how to consume music and research stuff and, like, have her own opinion about shit. I feel like the 50 movie, and, and again, I haven't watched Idol, but I think it's, because, like, it was 50 story, which we knew pretty well already. A dramatized version right, of right. 50 story. This, That's different. This is Weekend actively engaging in something which is showing. Say, like, Brandy highs, and Moesha. Right. Brandy mm-hmm. and Moesha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a better uh, comparison. Mm-hmm. Like or like, or like even um, Mariah Carey, glitter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, like niggas ain't. We don't appreci- get. We don't even get that type of shit anymore. No more. So like, how you complaining? Like when we yeah, get facts, it, bro. it's weird. I th- yeah. This is also just a very sensitive generation, and so I think facts weekend engaging in a show that has that type of lewd behavior, that imagery. Because there was like sexual violence yeah, in the show, it was, right? It was, it was, it was nut shit, bro. It was which is which happened. is t- it's tough to see. It was the music and then, industry. <laughs> and I think with Sam Levinson being involved, and he was having a lot of bad press from Euphoria and just mm-hmm. other stuff. Like, I think just a couple of things came together to affect the show's perception. I think I remember too. Um, Rolling Stone tried to interview him. Yeah, and he turned him down. He said, "Told him to like fuck off." Or yeah, 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 yeah. Good. So because like, they fired it, it was me. A very, fuck like, y'all. It was a very like yeah. It was a very like uh yeah. He was like, fuck you. I'm, this is my show. Like, I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Like, yeah. that's what goes on. <laughs> but he might have been the reason. But I don't think The weekend's portrayal. I mean, I hope not. Because, mm-hmm. again, it's, it's like y'all who are tapped in, who understand the industry right. versus casual niggas right. who are maybe looking to learn or looking to be entertained or to get a, some fantasy or be, to be, like, enchanted, mesmerized. And yeah. they're like, oh, my, like, you know. Nah, this is what it is, though. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it pulled back dark the, shit. It pulled back the curtain on reality and it, it didn't pull back the curtain on like some Disney movie like yeah cause then it's <laughs> like if, if you're part of that industry and these terrible things happen you're putting it on our screen for us to consume mm-hmm. why are you involved with it you know what I'm saying like I get I mean, me speaking from the casual no, I mean that's, that's what yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what normal people be thinking yeah, facts, yeah. Like, yeah. so that's that's what I was thinking about cause again okay. I, I didn't watch the show the, the 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 idea was brought up I was like that's interesting I, I never thought of that like Cause it was contra- controversial, like extremely controversial. I was so confused when I saw the controversy, mm. and then I watched it, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm in love." That's crazy. <laughs> that I thought, like, I felt like a crazy person, like how you were saying, like I was confused by the controversy too. I'm like, "Am I crazy for like thinking this is normal?" But mm-hmm. like, I just realized a lot of people don't like this. Shit is not that normal, but like yeah. it was just real. It was just. It was on HBO though too. Like, what are people crying about? Thank bro? you. Like, That's where the H- L word used to be on, facts. man. Like, bro. 
Sex in the City. Like we just like it's just it's HBO, bro. It used to be real sex on that bitch. Yeah. Real like, talk. You, like, bro, we used to see all types of nut shit. Bro. Real talk. You knew what it was when you signed up, but again, this generation is very different. From right. Like, right. Do y'all not listen to his music? <laughs> I feel like this generation, like the kids growing up, didn't stay up late and like watch TV past their bedtime mm -hmm. or like see shit that like like my nigga. I remember being a kid, like turned to HBO like past eleven o'clock. You know what the hell you might see. Cartoon on TV. Network on last. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah. <laughs> she, you know, she's locked in. Yeah, oh, yeah. turn the volume on the TV all, right, all, right, all the way down. So you're, just like, here, you're, sitting yep. like, yeah. you're sitting there like, oh my yep. god, like what am I watching? We know like, the vibes on in New York. Well, I don't know if anywhere else, but they had like the little black cable box with yes. the red yep, digital. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, the porn was on fifty nine. Come on now, <laughs> bro. We Everybody were, know, bro. Kids, kids these days have it too easy. They just be like looking shit up on their phone, and they're sheep. Like, that I don't too. need my fave to be a girl's girl or speak yeah. on politics or, yeah. like, just produce good art, bro. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see how things play out for a weekend. It's, again, it's looking like a stumble right now, but, um, you know, we'll see. Let's jump into this lunch break real quick. Um, another unfortunate loss in the entertainment space. We lost to Kembe Matumbo. Um, this shit hit me like way harder than I would have expected it to. And I was like sitting and thinking about it. I was talking to Josh about this before we got the cameras were turned on. When I first started like watching basketball and playing the basketball video games, like he was like, he was on the Sixers with Allen Iverson and Allen Iverson was just so cool to me as a kid. So like, obviously you use everyone else on the team too. So it was like Samuel Dallenbear and Takeme Matumbo and uh, Eric Snow and all them other niggas. So like, Dikembe was like, he was like so cool, like big ass dude, like super good on defense, the finger wag, all that. So it just, it just brought me back to like a place in my childhood, like a super influential time. And then I looked it up. We share a birthday. Like he's, he's, he's okay. also June 25th. So I'm like, fuck man. Like I lost Michael Jackson on my birthday in 2009. <laughs> I lost my, my birthday twin who was like one of the most entertaining basketball players to me. Like fucked up, 58 years old. So bro, uh, brain tumor. Like my dad's fifty eight right now. I'm like, God damn, bro. Like that's it's just crazy. And yeah. cancer too. I, I I hate cancer. I lost both of my grandparents to cancer, so I absolutely hate cancer. So. Fuck cancer. The older you yeah. get, bro, the older you get, and how and like you be hitting the, you be getting closer, not closer to your parents in age, but like you start to like, it's it's weird, bro. Yeah. And it's it's not weird. It's like life. It's just normal like progression mm -hmm. and like just understanding and, and being just being cool with it but like yeah the closer you start to get into like your parents age you're like damn like oh like 58 is not that far away no, no. I'm, like it's not I'm, that, I'm, that like that's i'm half of that i'm 29 right now literally. So I'm like bro i'm 32 like yeah. my nigga like that shit is not that far away yeah. and it's like it's just shit's crazy bro yeah, it's nuts um so rest in peace uh eight-time all-star four-time defensive player of the year uh three all nba selections six all defensive selections Obviously, I, I did research on him today, so I'm just rattling off these stats. But I was like, he, but he, you were so good at that. <laughs> he was the man, like, <laughs> he's, he, inducted in the Hall of Fame 2015. He's bigger uh, than he's bigger than basketball. He's bigger yeah. than a basketball legend too. He's really like a cultural legend. Yeah, like, you know, global like, ambassador too. Like, he was no really funny, no funny shit, influential bro. in the NBA, like it's stretching his hands out to uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then like pop yeah. culture Be beyond yeah. beyond the NBA, like he's a pop cult. He's icon. ingrained in pop culture for, for the finger wag. Like just like yeah, like you see random niggas just using gifs of him. Like yeah, the gif when he's like at the. <laughs> That GIF when he's at the uh the slam dunk competition and like somebody does a crazy dunk, he's like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that one is yeah. funny as fuck, bro. Yeah. I love that shit. Like, nah, the Kimbe was awesome. Yeah, so man, damn. <clears throat> Rest in peace to him, and obviously love to to his family, um, loved ones, fans, all that stuff. Um, I don't really want to talk about NFL because the Jets <laughs> lost. Um, that hurt. But your parlay hit. My, my parlays did hit. I was I was cooking cooking off FanDuel, so shout out to that. Um, let's jump into word of the week. Woo! Woo! What's it given this week, Armand? This week's word is pulchritude. Ooh. Can, can we say pulchritude? Pulchritude. Pulchritude? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, can you use it in a sentence? Yeah, I absolutely can, good sir. So, room full of beautiful women, but Ooh. her pulchritude stood above the rest. Ooh. Which, which I think pulchritude means. Beauty? Fat ass. Boom. There you go. Beauty. 
It's, it's just a fancy way to say beauty. <laughs> Look at that ass. No. He said beauty no. and the booty. It's, it's not Calipigian week. Oh, my it's Poker 2 week. Okay, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, Poker 2 is uh, another one Focus, of my favorite nigga. words to use in, in normal conversation. You just drop it. They're like, yo, either they ask what's that mean or they look it up. And they're like, oh. No, so, I definitely would not give nobody box if they say that to me. Wow. Well, you, you just don't want to learn new words? Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> I don't know, but don't, anyway. don't tell me that. Our word of the week, pokeritude, a noun meaning beauty. Um, so, with that, let's jump into our board meeting for this week. So, I like this one. This podcast, um, we are, we have, you smart. We've had one running joke, but before y'all joined, the running joke, people thought we hated Summer Walker. We don't hate Summer Walker. We just didn't think over it was a classic. Really good album. We just didn't think it was a classic. But that joke followed us from season one all the way up to like. I mean, people haven't made the joke in a while, but like, you think it's a classic? Over it? Over it. Um, That's the one we're on the phone? Yeah. Uh, I think still Over It was better than that one. I do too. But it, it's a good project. Over It was very wait, influential. Wait, 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 like, wait. Which one is Still Over It? Still Over It's the one she dropped in 2021. When she was out the car, like, oh. where, 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 where she was cooking London on the track with the oh, song yeah. uh, Fourth Baby Mama. Your, your mama should have beat your ass. <laughs> that's how she started the song. Your mama should have whooped your ass. <laughs> Um, but anyways, I said that... if he really fucked his baby mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. insane. <laughs> I, I say all that to say I feel like our new joke that's going to follow us. We have two now. Obviously, Lil Baby comes up a lot, and we <laughs> we always make fun of him. But I think this four bats thing is going to follow us for some time. It, it's yep. it it caught some steam on social media, Kojo and Rain and everyone, and um, you know, at, at this point. I'm 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 done with the debate. You know, <laughs> I proved my point. The, the, no, there, you didn't. The, 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 there were videos of the tour. Um, Miss Two B's trying to say that it, it was an OVO thing. Exactly, your algorithm is very OVO to tailored. OVO, but okay. Four Bats is not even OVO anymore. So what you mean anymore? He's he's they they signed a, a deal for that EP, so it was just to put that EP out. But that did it didn't even fully go through. Like if you notice, well, why, why was the 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 Drake remix not on the project? I was just about to ask. I thought it was just for the project that he was releasing after this one. I thought nope. that's what the deal was for. No, it, it was for the first one, and then, then that completely fell through. So, mm. yeah, he was OVO for like a week, maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> so yeah, all that to say, I like him because I like him. By the way, if you haven't heard "Roll the Dice" featuring Lil Baby, coincidentally, really good song. Check that out. <laughs> but. That conversation and something you said when in that clip, I was rewatching the clip as it circulated social media, and there was one thing you said where you were talking about. I'm always saying some shit. You are always saying things. <laughs> it's okay. That's it's a podcast. You know, we all are always saying things. But there was one thing you said talking about new artists and how they're not equipped to gain momentum like musically. It's the drama. It's you know all these things. And um, I was sitting and thinking about it, and I was like. While it is true, a lot of these new artists do be gaining, uh, I don't want to say popularity, notoriety and attention via their drama. I'm like, is that really fair, like a blanket thing to generalize and all that? So I was like, hmm, this could lead into a good conversation about like rookies in music, impressive rookie years that we've seen, what the acts did to sustain the steam that they were getting and the differences from when we were growing up in the 2000s to the 2010s and the advent of the blog era to now, what the metrics for success are, what they have to do. So, yeah, I, I want to kick it off. And I think the, a great place to start, a rookie year that was like, and by rookie, I mean like within the mainstream. Yeah. Like, the, like, for example, Cash Cobain. I think he's viewed as a rookie now within yeah. the mainstream. But he, as Will says, he's been making music since like 2016. Well, he's I'll a He's a he, yeah, yeah, bro. He's yeah. he's he's a rookie to these niggas. Like yeah, he, he's the bro. type like BT would give like new artist of the year, and we'd be like, bro, we've been listening to Cash for years. Like right. what? <laughs> my nigga, he's nominated for that the BT Hip Hop Awards. He's um yeah, best new artist. That's dope. Streaming. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> best best Hopefully producer. he gets it. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But um, one rookie year that was like super impactful to me. I remember it like it was yesterday. We talked about him earlier. Fifty Cent. 2003, he yeah. comes with in the club, Wankster, all those yeah. tracks, Get Rich or Die Trying. And to me, my, what was I, seven years old at that point, but hearing him on the radio, seeing him on 106 in Park, like, he felt like the biggest rapper in the world at the time. Like, yes. I gravitated to him more than I gravitated to, like, 
Jay Z or Nas or anyone else. Like fifty. Was also, not we're young. That's not our generation, too. Yeah, yeah. So, for y'all, in remembering those times and now looking back with the knowledge that we have, what did Fifty do to gain the popularity and sustain it? And what were the what were like the metrics for success at that time? Authenticity. Mm-hmm. We diss niggas. Authenticity, <laughs> and then also, um, since there wasn't no social media, the folklore of artists mm-hmm. used to be legendary. My yeah. nigga. like you, like niggas would be in school, like yo, you heard he like he like lived from like nine shots, mm-hmm. like he, like he's like he's like bulletproof, he's like Superman, he's like from New York, he's he's and killing he dropped niggas. Dropped the movie, yeah, he yeah. dropped a movie. He got a video game, video my nigga. Game called he's bulletproof. Like, bro, do you see what's going <laughs> yeah. on? Yeah. Like, and you know, like I guess like fifty. For us in the mid- Midwest, like it, it was like that. But another good example of someone like that is like Kanye West mm-hmm. to us. So yeah. it was like you know it was like the same type of thing. Like it was like, oh, he's like wearing polos. He's doing like whatever the fuck he wants to do. And it's yeah. like I just think the folklore of like artists back then used to be so crazy. And like yeah. the imagination you could put in your head as like as a fan, mm-hmm. as just a consumer, used to be magical. Like it used to be like yeah. real Disney movie shit yeah. in our heads. Also, yeah. his affiliations as well. Affiliations was, when yeah. Puff was trying to blackball him, mm-hmm. um, Dr. Dre, yeah. Eminem. He, he told us on in the club, even though I fuck with Dre, and you can show oh me God. love. Oh, wait, he, they second. made sure. In the club was so crazy. Yo, my the grandma video, calls me every year on my hot. birthday, like, go shorty. It's, it's your br- my mom says year. it all the time, every bro. Every year. And if he gave money, like, bro, like, it's like my mom, like, my, like. As soon as he dropped from that ceiling, we mm-hmm. all were like. My nigga. Oh I can, I can, I can see it in my head. Like, I'm closing my eyes and literally see literally. it. Literally. Like, go. The go, muscle tees go. around the hood. My Niggas nigga. even started drinking the video fucking was, Gatorade. The video, <laughs> was, the video was so crazy. Like, they was making a nigga, bro. Yeah. Like, they was making the perfect nigga in the lab. Yeah. And he dropped down. It was like. And on some hood shit, when he dropped How to Rob and literally dissed the whole industry and yeah. was on some like unapologetic, he even dissed Oprah. I'm like, oh, yeah. like, don't give a fuck. <laughs> he don't care. Yeah, it was it was the energy he came with on top of good music, on yeah. top of how he moved in business, yeah. on top of the cosigns. It was yeah. everything really came together perfectly. Yeah. And this was a time where development was more of a thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it just it worked perfectly for 50 Cent to where Literally, he felt like the biggest rapper in the world at that time. Like it was Hov was shook. It was hit magical, after my hit nigga. after hit. It was like magical, goddamn, bro. Hov was shook. I remember yeah. in an interview he said, um, I don't know if it was Fifty or um, Jay Z that said it, but Jay told people like, "Yo, this Fifty Cent dude, he's coming." Yeah, watch out for him. Yeah, yep. yeah. I remember and then that. like getting older and like I, I maybe I just didn't see, I didn't do research or whatever, but like getting <laughs> older and seeing that one video of him in the in the club performing mini men like acapella mm-hmm. and looking like this nigga will literally kill everybody in this shit mm-hmm. and nobody's yeah. gonna do shit like that shit like Remember at the B T award? That makes, oh my god. That makes, that when makes, he walked around bro, the whole shit. That makes that makes like the I hair in the back so of the neck stand up. Nigga. Cause I love that song. I loved amusement park. No, nah, so like, but he had perform the song. No. He walk around dapping up everybody. Right in front of the Walking niggas. by his ops, like, yeah, like you're not gonna do nothing to me. You're not gonna touch me. I'm like, it was, it was I loved him. Special, he bro. was he's always been a menace. Special, bro. Yeah, and and <laughs> from his rookie year onward, it only got bigger. We talked about the movie, we talked about the video game. The vitamin water. He had me drinking Formula 50. <laughs> that that shit wasn't actually good. It wasn't good, but I was drinking that shit. Like, no, the insane. muscle tees. Niggas ain't have muscles, but they was wearing that shit. Yeah. It was a lot. The yeah. whole G Unit era too, because I had like a sneakers? little Lloyd Banks era oh. too. I, I, I was gonna say he he put on people. Niggas, I had a Lloyd Banks era. Nigga, stunt one hundred and one. Come yeah. on, man. Lloyd, what are you talking Tony about? Tony Yale, Tony Yale went what double platinum. Yeah, thoughts of a predicate felon. Um, like even Olivia, Young I kind of fucked with her too. I remember when, oh like, God. they became, like, Super friend. G-Unit. He signed Mob Deep. He yeah. signed MOP. And oh his street God. affiliations, like, the whole Supreme team, like, everything about him is authentic. Like, you're rapping yeah. about what you really live yeah. and now. We're it's, really it's, on some, like, oh, shit. It's, it's, they got a clothing brand. We didn't even talk about the clothing brand. Like, Yo, totally different. I, was, I, I was wearing G-Unit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, 50 is really, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's one of the best... Example, you mentioned Kanye West. Kanye is a good example from from the 2000s as well. Mm. Like just fully, obviously producing for a bunch of people. His affiliations, yep. His just mind for music, like the type of music he made was just so different mm-hmm. than everyone else. It was so like so artistically inclined, like yes. really just layered and even the samples, the sample he chops and like the shit he like, was even talking about. Like it was just different. Like it was just different. P- like. People credit him for kind of 
opening the door for more like nerds, like, like musical her- nerd type I niggas. I can see that. Non-street niggas to really get into this. And I think when you look at a Drake, when you look at some of these more, these artists who came later on who like weren't the biggest gangsters, but they but the gangsters fuck with them. Right. Because they were just, they were ingrained in hip hop culture. It's like, yeah, I, I, I would give Kanye credit for that. For I remember, sure. I remember hearing, um, heard him say, and mm-hmm. like also seeing the video, I'm like, oh wait, niggas be like talking about shit like this, mm-hmm. and like, <laughs> and like it was like very like, oh like, it's not like super braggadocious shit. It's like real life, like yeah. baseline. Like damn, everybody kind of go through this type of shit. Like mm-hmm. it was, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was just cool. It gave us the whole college theme, college dropout, mm-hmm. late registration, graduation. Mm-hmm. It was just like it was just different. It was mm-hmm. different than what everyone else was doing, but it was refreshing. And again, you saw who fucked with him. Everybody fucked with him. He had Paul Wall versus T.I. versus. He had Hove, obviously. He had, like, he was doing shit with um, uh, a- Adam Levine. Like, he was, yeah. like, he, Ted- like <laughs> it was, it was, it was insane. So, yeah, I, I definitely credit Kanye as, like, really using all of the things that were afforded to him, taking over the radio, appearing on 106 in Park, like, just different shit like that, like, playing the game and kind of making it his own. Yo, like, when, when when my bad, when, when yeah. him and Fifty went against each other, yep. that was incredible. That was a one moment. of the best moments incredible, ever, bro. like in hip hop. Yeah, like, like, music. Yeah. Like, we were tapped in. They were standing face to face. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit. Like, they they, <laughs> they serious on, about this shit. Yeah. <laughs> they they went on one one oh six in Park the same day, and and they were it like was lit. they were like bigging each other up. It it was it was just competitive. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't no hate. In yeah, moment. it was like it was just dope it was fun beef. Yeah, it, it was dope <laughs> to see. Somebody should do that now. <laughs> it don't be fun. These, don't be. These niggas, these niggas Unless you could really write, like, come out with your own hits without controversy. Just don't mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. <laughs> but so we look at the 2000s and then we go to the 2010s. Mm-hmm. What kind of, obviously, the blog era came and people were utilizing the internet a lot more. Radio is still a thing, but these artists were able to kind of get it out the mud on their own without needing radio at first so i think about like wiz khalifa i think about mac miller i think about currency obviously the drake cole kendricks even the kid cuddies like so 2010s was was a little different what do you think were the metrics for success the ways of like pushing pushing yourselves and like who were the artists who like really shined in the 2010s in, in their rookie years well, <clears throat> go ahead. Well, I'm about to pull out my notes. All right. Um, <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned um, Wiz Khalifa. I used I, I lived in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really close to Pittsburgh. So, a lot of early first Wiz shows, uh, he came to Cincinnati, and I went to one. And I just remember um, being at that age of like, okay, you're first starting to go outside. First, kind of like got a car, I can drive, I can kind of like go out, be be late, come home late, and like going out. At maybe like 16, 17, 18, and seeing seeing somebody like that in person that you used to see on blogs and stuff like that, I feel like the uh, the affirm the affirmation of seeing those type of rookies or like stars early on in real life, yeah, in like small venues, not these packed out super arenas and stuff, was it 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 expounded on the lore that you know that we kind of talked about in the yeah. early two thousands, but like now it's like the lore in real life which is just happens to just getting older and being able to do more shit like yeah. the older you get you more more freedom you can have to do shit so yeah. i just feel like seeing those people in person and like actually actually connecting with fans and like you know like they really used to do like real like circuits back in the day now if now people think they can just like do a few shows and like oh i can yeah. i can sell out a whole tour like no yeah. my nigga you got to College you gotta, tour. You got to hit the college tour. You got these small bars. Mm-hmm. You got to hit these, like, everything. And it's like... Do your hometown fuck with you? Facts. And, like, yeah, does a town outside of your hometown fuck with you? Mm-hmm. Like, it really used to be like that. And I feel like that was kind of, like, some of the confirmations in the 2010s and, like, yeah. blog era type stuff. Yeah, it wasn't as much mm-hmm. hearsay or word of mouth with the lore you keep referring mm-hmm. to. We were getting it directly from these guys. They, yep. they were on these blogs. They were using MySpace. They were actually doing interviews and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's really given um, themselves to us. And I think with Wiz in particular, weed culture has obviously been embraced throughout hip hop, but the way he embraced weed. He made that shit cool. He made niggas really want to start smoking weed, like rolling papers and 
um, all these other brands. Like it was like it my was my boo dedicated roll up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god! Like, it was nuts. Like even me, like back, I was I was kind of whack in high school, so I, I didn't start smoking weed till like later in high school. That's but, good. Though. But I, I, good. I I was sitting there, like, I was good. seeing all, all my friends just like, yo, we get high, we listen to Wiz, woo, woo, yeah, <laughs> like cushion OJ, you get higher. Like, oh, like, yeah. like niggas literally drink the orange. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the funniest, funniest bro, like scientific so theory, fried, bro. bro. Niggas like, yo, I swear, you drink orange juice when you smoke. You gonna get higher. I did that shit. I was pissed. I was like, bro, <laughs> this shit ain't do nothing. I'm like, get the bro, fuck out of here, niggas bro. Niggas was doing yeah. that, and niggas was wearing camos and fucking bro, bro. Chuck and Taylors, yeah. snapbacks. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 um, and, die, and die. I was like, damn, like niggas are really and laughing in. like him. Yeah. Don't yeah, forget exactly. that part. Yeah, Taylor, fucking gang, good, Goodwood chains, uh-huh. Diamond Supply, uh-huh. all that. Like that was their daddy. That's in the 2010s. other thing. Like the, 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 my the fashion within hip hop has always been. Something and I think the artists who have embraced fashion and pushed it, like Kanye with the with the Louis V backpacks and the polo shirts, Fifty Cent obviously his own clothing brand, Wiz getting niggas to wear camo shirts and Chuck Taylors and snapbacks and all niggas. that. I think he was just that lit and everybody just followed suit. Yeah, Correct. yeah, like it was. He I, has a uniform. I definitely <laughs> got a pair of Converse's. Hello? I started wearing snapbacks. Feel I me? got my first pair of camo shorts. <laughs> I, I ain't never dyed my hair. I ain't, I ain't do that dumb shit. But yeah. you didn't was, laugh like him. Uh, I, tr- I probably tried. I probably tried to. And like Tyga around then too. Granted, Tyga was, was in the game for Tyga. a little bit, but. That mixtape run he had, yes, and the way he also impacted style, yes, and just the presence of I'm it too. So ha- I knew okay, I liked okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. I knew I liked okay, you because okay, okay. Ty- no, because people no, be right, trying to right, front on Tiger. Right, right. Tiger was that nigga, yeah. bro. What? And one thing about him, he's gonna do a female rap collab. He's mm-hmm. gonna give the girls a feature. He's super he's consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like people he's be fronting though. He's a, he's a mixtape legend. Smoking the other niggas beats. Like he was, yes. he was but I really yes. want to ask y'all, y'all East Coast and New York people, really you, and. Can we categorize this as the 2010s? What was it like when ASAP Rocky came out? That was huge. Because my nigga, it hit, it hit Ohio. It was huge. High that schools. was big. I'm was talking huge. about niggas was wearing black scale and mm-hmm. like doing like, like just doing Rocky type shit, like purple swag and yeah. gold teeth. Everybody, it was, it was that, well, that first, movement was crazy. Yeah, bro. he from Harlem mm-hmm. and like super Harlem. Like yeah. Yeah. Harlem people are just... Like, New Yorkers all act the same, but I just feel like Harlem, you will really get the essence of a New Yorker. Like, yeah. you put a Harlem person in, in a dictionary in the, right next to <laughs> next the definition of New I, Yorker. Yeah. I've been like, living there. I've been living there long enough that, like, I understand 100% what, what I'm you're saying. Because like, like it's like, all right, you 100%. see a Brooklyn person, you see a Queens person, but Harlem it's for just, some it's a whole reason. Thing. It's, sticks out like a it's a whole thumb. different, re- it's a whole different yeah. level. Of so life. that's one. Yeah. He's proud of that shit. He big yes. Harlem. Yes. And then had a gang. Had a collective so yeah. also at that same time when asap rocky was blowing up um joey was also blowing up mm-hmm. flatbush zombies was also blowing Flat up yeah. like, mm. so like new york was just on fire it was, was on fire, fire. Yeah. and then like you know i went to high school with joey we yeah. went tomorrow so like we vividly remember like watching the bt hip-hop award cypher and just seeing him on there and like nigga what what the <laughs> fuck you was just in science class yesterday nigga. literally like he ain't saying nothing then yeah. like dropped out to go on tour with juicy j and like finished got his degree online and stuff but mm-hmm. I remember he had a show at the knitting factory and mm-hmm. like Brooklyn people one thing especially when we were younger it was a big community like we supported each other like yeah. anybody had a party or anything we was all mobbing yeah Joey had a show opening up for ASAP now all the girls went there me and all my homegirls went and of course we went to support we he went by Joe V at the time so we went to support our friend but we went for Rocky. Right. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna lie. We went for him. Yeah, no, Rocky was that dude. Literally, I think I've said on the show before, my, my crew in high school, we called ourselves ASAP Mob. We, 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 was, we was doing the it's, handshake. That was, like, that was the okay, thing. Bro. Yeah, that was the like, thing. Like, 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 we was, that was cool. okay, bro. bro. It was that influential, bro. I'm trying to tell you. And like, his confidence as a yeah, man, yeah. too. Yeah. Calling himself bro. a pretty motherfucker. It's pretty, like, pretty flaco, fashion yeah. killer, all that shit. Like, you might not like it, but you just, you're still paying attention. Yeah. I still think his tape, like... Like the ASAP mob tape is fire, but like his tape with the woman with, with like the uh, the American, American flag, flag in the background. I think, is that yep. long live? That ASAP? shit is yep. like, that's or, just or dead. Live, love, I could I can listen to that all the way through. That shit is like a classic to me. Like, yeah, that nah, nigga, it was like, it was a moment. Was Goldie, music, yep. hands on the wheel, purple purple swag. Pur- I think it was like. Mm. 
Lamborghini. He he, he was on a run. Like 2011 to 2015 Rocky. Crazy. Peso, yes. That's yes. The, yeah, yeah. Peso. I, was like, oh, I was like, oh my yeah. God, these are the coolest niggas I've ever seen yeah, in my nah, life. Also, was, one thing like, about what? being a part of a collective, it just gets you more attention. Yeah. Facts. yeah, yeah. It gets you more attention. I don't know what's the science behind it, but mm. I remember being a part of a girlfriend group and mm. just the amount of attention that we got was overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, there's the strength in numbers and yeah. Ferg, Ferg was actually good. Yeah, um, Twelve E was good. Yeah. Like there, there were a bunch of dope dudes, and like, people nigga. fucked with them. We saw Drake embrace him. We saw mm-hmm. him working with Schoolboy Q. We saw a bunch of different people embrace Rocky. Like f- fucking problems. Looking back on it at, at, at that time, that's like that's almost like the swagger like us. Yes. Remember when Kanye Hove. Yeah, Ti like that's a good, that was like that's a, good a later Very swagger good. like us. It was like got Drake, Kendrick, Rocky, and Two Chains Literally. all on the same record. What the fuck? Like, was and they too. all had like crazy verses too. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. They, it was it was all memorable. So yeah, no, Rocky was huge. It was I was I was definitely a huge huge fan at the time, and he was just super yeah. influential in the style um it, there was like some nostalgia to it because he embraced yeah Houston it was so very much. like yeah like, that's, a, that's like a it good. was like to, to be a new york nigga sounded like this but but then he had the new york type tracks too like right the it backpack was crazy, bro, boom bap shit because like the collective thing like how y'all saying like the collective thing was so cool then he introduced Ye- like yams was introduced and like oh yeah this was cool and then like when they introduced fur and mm. Ferg, yep. first song was Hard as fuck. Bro, Ferg blew up, yeah. Niggas was like, oh, yeah, these niggas got it. Like, they this is like, this is like, they just got it, bro. And then, like, the tape, that like, the, the mob tape, they got that song with, um, with the Flatbush Zombies on mm-hmm. it. Like, that, 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 that song, like, everything. Yeah. It was just special, bro. It was, it like, was a moment. Yeah. It was like you said, it was, like, new, but it was, like, had, like, this feel of, like, vintage, like, oh, like, we're, like, going back to the essence, but, like, this is our shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just felt very, like, new our shit. And, like, you, you knew the group was popping because with every popping group, people always try to say, and sometimes it's true, the 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 leader or the face of it isn't the best one. There was there was a while where niggas Facts. was trying to say Ferg was better than Rocky. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying it. But it was like the, the fact, fact that was, people yeah. were talking about them in that way. Just it, it was kind of a. It showed me like yo, bro, these niggas are really out of here. Like they had Nas rapping. Nas don't even make music no more. Mm-hmm. Like it was like crazy. It was yeah. it was just it was a whole movement. It had niggas thinking they could do whatever the fuck. Like oh, like these niggas in fashion. Yeah. These mm-hmm. niggas walking shows. These niggas, like, it was just very, like, oh, they cool with Virgil. Like, it was just very, like, damn. That time period was amazing. Yeah. No, it team. was. Like, it's, like, actually, like, making me. Yeah. Would 2018 sad. still be considered the 2010s? Because yeah. you guys all mentioned people that I have on my list. Mm-hmm. Of, and I also have the obvious Drake and Nikki. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but one person that I put was Cardi. Oh, me too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Cardi, Cardi B. B. Yeah, I think 2017, 2018 was would her count as her rookie, her mm-hmm. mainstream rookie year. Starting out with Bodak Yellow. I I remember when that hit the streets. Gangsta Bitch Volume 1 and 2. I, so I, I wasn't hip to those. So it it took me, I had to go back to them. My like, homeboy used to be like, Ebony, you're not co-signing this shit. You're tainting your credibility. And I'm just like, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Fuck with this shit. <laughs> I really do. Mm-hmm. I really, really do. Yeah. I didn't even... Bodak Yellow wasn't even that good to me. I feel like she had other songs on Gangsta Bitch Volume 1 and 2 that could have been, like, her breakthrough. But mm-hmm. I, I get why. You know, it was the Kodak Black flow and stuff. But, yeah. yeah. yeah what nah. would you say would be, like, the recipe for her stardom, though? Because it's not like the people we just mentioned. I, I mean, one, it, it was people knowing her as, as a stripper, knowing her from reality TV. It was a Social storm. media. She had the built-in fan bro. base and audience. It was a so it was storm. just sticking the landing with dope music. And Facts. she did that. Atlantic packaged her perfectly like bodak yellow i agree she's made better songs but it caught on it caught on crazy like summertime when that song came on at a function it was over Mm -hmm. like there was nothing to say it was over everyone was singing it like uh, she say she gonna do what to who let's find out a seat cardi b like there we go (laughs) (laughs) but it just it caught on crazy and then she came up barty and cardi with 21 savage i hate that song that um I hate that song. That fall of 2017, where she was on the the G Easy record, she smoked that. Yes. Motorsport. Ooh, and, I hate that. And verse. the immediate Nikki drama, like all that. But, <laughs> like, but, but you want to guess Nikki? Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. When did she do the uh, the Bruno Mars songs? Because those that was, that was an era too. I want to say "Please Me" was like 2019. That's why I feel like she went to like a different like a, like a she went to like. I don't know. How I think her that. debut album did that for her with the Latin collab. Yeah, true. she true, she true, just true, had true. so much on there. Like yeah. her singles were Bodak Yellow, Bardia Cardi with Twenty One. I like Be it careful. Like that. 
and, and then it was Drip with Migos. I, I, I like Wait, it. that wasn't a single? Yeah, I no, like it wasn't. It. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Let me check, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Um, but that one caught on crazy because it was that was like Bad Bunny when the world was re- like he yes. he was around for a while, but globally he really blew up at that time. So. Yeah, and they were battling like, oh, who's gonna be the top Latin nigga? Yeah. Oshuna, Bad Bunny, or it, it J Balvin? Was Bunny and J Balvin on that record, which was nuts. Like yeah. that's just insane to have. That, that record is actually, cool. and yeah. I love when Cardi speaks Spanish. You know, she's she, she's good. I like, love when good. she does it. She makes really good records. She sounds good in Spanish. So. Yeah, I, I think it was the reality TV built-in fan base. Her, not her as a stripper, just who she was. Like I remember watching her on like SNL and all the other like TV shows. Like, yo, she's funny. Like, she's cool. She's the type of person like you want to root for her. She feels like your homegirl, and she's also coming with dope records. And I think for all her singles to be hard, and then the album to drop, and it just. Like it, it just hit. Everything hit. She had Sizzle on there, Kaylani, yeah. Bad Bunny, uh, yeah. Chance the Rapper. When people still fucked with Chance, like it was like <laughs> it was the perfect storm of like everyone. Like, she was married to Amigo. Yeah, yeah. The the offset relationship, like yeah, it it just it all similar to Fifty Cent. It just all came together, and I think especially with it being a woman, because Nikki was was the by herself, yeah, for a decade. She was running it for a long time, and many came and tried. That they they couldn't stick it, but like Cardi came in hot, like like people were actually saying like, oh, she's coming for Nicki. Yeah, like, even though it was unsuccessful, like the fact that people were talking about it, yeah, was like, yeah, no, it like, was like she was the the top competitor that we'd seen in a long time. But and, she don't write her stuff, so well, that's not the point. But yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but, it but but and it was just like a year of just not missing, like whether it was a feature, whether it was her stuff, like she just did not miss for like a year. After Invasion of Privacy, she tried to come with some singles. Them shits ain't hit, and it's you know kind of been up and down ever since. But that that's one of the greatest rookie years we've ever seen. Like yeah. it was like living through it. Just like every time she got on something, I was like, "Fuck, another fire verse!" Like yep. she was on Championships, Meek Mill, Smoked on Me on 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 uh, that record. Um, Trying to remember the other ones. It was it was a lot. It was the a rookie lot. year got renamed to the Cardi B year. I yeah. remember a lot of people calling it that. Yeah. So yeah, she she did her big one. She was she was cooking and and that's and she popped up at the perfect time for an artist like her because early 2010s it was the blog era. It was these blogs kind of running shit. One by one, the blogs kind of disappeared. People didn't really care about journalism and publications as much. Mm-hmm. Complex and like Elevator and certain magazines, like niche, like the niche ones. And then there were some big ones that still mattered. But these artists could just like promote themselves, like right. through Instagram, through Instagram Live, through Twitter, like through all these things. Like I think, and I've, I've like unfollowed a bunch of celebrities like lately just because following them gets annoying. But I think at that time I was following so many people. And Cardi B was one of the people I loved to follow because she was just funny. Like she, she would like she would go at fans, clown them, like whether she was defending herself, like she just used social media so well, yeah, and kind of showed like yes, she had the backing of a label, but you felt like she felt accessible, she felt it tangible, felt, it felt real, my nigga. yeah, and she's it genuine just, as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just felt, it just felt, yeah, it felt real, and it felt like like you said, we was all like watching it and living it. Like we're all rooting for her because mm-hmm. it was. It felt like one of our own. It felt like yo, we seen her come up and then yeah, she was a stripper or whatever. But like mm-hmm. nigga, we all out here trying to get it. The fuck, and yeah. she got it and now she's on and like oh my god, she's <laughs> about to win a fucking Grammy. Oh wait, you beat out Travis Scott. Like oh my god, like yeah. that shit is like like that shit was like that shit was like watching like a like a American like they could like do like a a biopic on her like rookie year. I feel Absolutely, like. it could be like an American dream type of like scenario, bro. Yeah. Like she really did that shit. Hundred percent. When I think of Cardi though, it was so hard for me to make a list of people for the twenty twenties. Yeah, because I'm just like, all right, I know who I'm banking on, mm-hmm. but I. It's so hard to bank on artists these days because they don't keep the momentum going for long enough. Like, I would have never thought Roddy Rich would be where he's at right now. (laughs) Like, at all. So, I'm just like, yo, I don't know. Like, even when the baby came out, I am embarrassed to admit that I did like him when he first came out, too. I liked him, too, bro. It was was crazy, nigga. He was fine. My like, nigga, he was killing people and knocking people out. Like, and, like it was like it was like real life. And like, beating charges. Yeah, like it was nuts. It was nigga. some 50 cent shit, Loki. Yes. Yeah. 
Like it was a lot. So it's like my now pop smoke. I don't oh my know God, who to my death. pop. Yeah, like I was. I was gonna talk he, about he, pop he's, next. He's about to be the one. I was, I I was gonna talk you. about pop. But then next. I'm not even gonna lie to you. There was time for development, but like the the posthumous, I never know how to fucking pronounce that shit. Pos- posthumous. Yeah. Pos- that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, that shit. Post hummus. <laughs> yeah, post hummus. <laughs> that nigga died. <laughs> but the post hummus work, I just did like it. I hate that stuff. But yeah, okay. I I don't know. I, I'm like, all right. He didn't get to finish it or whatever, mm. so I can't really judge it. But can we gauge how long he would have lasted? Because it just didn't give it's much. It's impossible, yeah. We, we, we'll, we'll never know. We yeah. can only speculate. So, and it's like the way all the drill rappers just weren't lit. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh my God. But I was only going to root for Pop because he's Panamanian. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I thought he was Haitian. I don't know the why. Thing, the thing with Panamanians Pop. Panamanians and Haitians, like, we, we like fake this? tapped in, yeah. Dang. Pop. You know, and, and like you, it, working kind of close with him and stuff like that, and like being around it, like it was, uh, yeah, nigga. It was, I remember going to that studio session after your and like coming home, like sitting on the couch, and like I don't know if y'all ever seen that episode of Atlanta when the nigga gets smacked after like the promoter nigga gets smacked with the money. He like, and the guy walks, in, he's like, that nigga gonna be a star. That's what I did. I came and sat down in my chair, like took off my headphones, like took my backpack, like looked at my girlfriend, I was like. That nigga's gonna be a star. Yeah. Like this is like I can't like hundred percent. And then like it happened, and you know him passing, and it was crazy. But like looking back, like still when I hear his songs on the radio, like that song he has like a boogie and like a lot. Mm-hmm. Those those are, like perfect songs, yeah. like literally like perfect, like yeah. like perfect. My nigga, I'm talking the about like with, uh, literally little, like little TJ. Yeah, yeah, it's like a lot yeah. of shit he has. Like I'm like, damn, these are like really like perfect ass records. Like, yeah. yeah. And then and at times it just washed over me like when it was happening. But like now that he's gone, like looking back, I'm like, damn, this nigga, he was making like perfect music, bro. Yeah. Like it was like, it was it was just it was an it was, undeniable time. And I think yeah, the magical. key the key thing that with everyone we've been talking about, whether it's the 2010s or or the 2000s, is they had something unique musically. Like, yeah. besides the packaging, besides what business stuff they did, like, 50 Cent and Wiz don't sound like each other. No. Cardi B and fucking uh, Kanye West don't sound like each other. Like, everyone brought something different to the table that set them apart. And so with Pop, for me, it was like, I, I remember, you know, Drill, Brooklyn Drill was getting popping. But his voice, like that, that just set him apart. And then he could also rap well. He had funny, catchy lines. He had cool flows. The music just like brought this different energy to the party. It was like first time I heard "Welcome to the Party." I had, I, personally, I, I, again, I thought he made better songs than that. But yeah, again, the energy, everything it was it was undeniable. It was like you just felt something, at, like at a function. It just it just set everything off. And there was definitely the concern for me, like, all right. This drill stuff has a ceiling, so what's next? And I, I, I think it was um, Meet the Woo Two. Mm. At the very end, he has a song with PMB Rock, mm. which is some like hood love song type stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so he's he's preparing, he's preparing to make facts. that star turn. Like yeah. he's he knows he's gonna have to get into different bags. And I remember his um, his cover of um, or his version of. I, I think fabulous. I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. so, 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 into so into you, like that leaked. I was like, okay, good. He's doing stuff like this because that's what Fifty Cent did too. Fifty Cent gave you the rap stuff, but he gave you Twenty One Questions. He gave you Best Friend. He gave you a bunch of different joints with Olivia Smile. Like Fifty knew he was like, yeah, I could rap my ass off. I could come up with these like pop rap tracks, but I got to get into my love bag too. I got to give y'all variety. Ladies. I yep. got to give you a variety. And so I was like, okay, cool. Pop is doing that. And then he passes. I'm like, fuck. And you hear it on um, Shoot for the Stars and Aim for the Moon. Like, he had a he had a mixed bag of of records. Like, he had a joint with fucking uh, Dua Lipa. Like, Dua, Dua yes, Lipa. Like, like uh, Burn a Boy. Like, he was he was kind of all over, but it worked. Like, it was, it was dope. So it was, it sucked to not see him be able to fully realize that. And posthumously, people are putting it together for him because, like, the energy just isn't there. The feeling, the connection isn't there. But but I I personally feel like he was building that foundation. And if he was still around, I don't know if he would have been still as big as he is now. Because we also, we, we've been talking a lot about like the artists and how the systems have changed. But the consumer has changed too. Yes. Like back in the day, we, we would buy an album and we would listen to that album until we were ready to listen to another one. Now with everything at our fingertips, we listen to something. If we like it, we might keep listening to it. Or we just set it aside, move on to something else. People don't, people don't, so certain albums don't have good staying power, but as listeners, a lot of us don't have the habit of staying with something either. 
So mm-hmm. like it's all changed. Um, so I mean, shit don't be good though. But Pop's album was really good. It was all, one of those all of his good projects. Were great. projects yeah. that you I, know, all of his projects while he were alive were great. I think also. Yes. <laughs> I think also he also he he just had. He had like a different type of like star power. Bro. Yeah, I can't absolutely. Lie to you. Like, Grown women like, were talking about having yeah. sex with this little. I'm boy. talking about dead ass. I'm talking about dead ass. Every time he like talking to like a mic, like niggas would be like propped up, like listening. Like, Maybe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what you gotta say, my nigga? Like, it's that voice. It, I'm, I, I, it's that I don't want to be like that type of like nigga, but like I can his, say it for you. Thank you. It's that voice. It was mm. everything. It my makes nigga. the room vibrate. Like I have an uncle with a deep voice, Holy and like shit. even if my uncle <laughs> whispers. To- the fucking room it is going just, to feel like different. it's vibrating. Yeah. Like, my uncle don't even got it. That's why he don't even argue with people or women, especially. Because yeah. his voice. Yeah. Then he was like a New York nigga for real. I man. was just about... I must say, so I could... I'm not going to speak too much, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I ain't going to speak too much on this part. I, I'm going to, you know, uh-huh. say what's already surfaced. But, you know, the whole New York drill movement happening um, at the time and him being the prominent figure outside of that. You know, I'm from Hawthorne. Mm. So... You know, I remember when 22 G's dropped, you know, Go Nowhere Without This Damn Blicky and oh all that. God. And like, you know, shooting time. shooting the video in the park around the corner from our crib. They're like, yo, Ab, you going to be in the video? I'm like, no. Nigga, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> thank you. I've escaped this shit from the whole GS9 stuff. Like, y'all, oh, y'all have shit. y'all moment. But like, you know, that moment happening, like, Pop Smoke went viral when he was younger for getting slapped by this boy who was killed by the cops named Kiki. Mm. And they he chapowed him, like, in the video, chapowed, like, said it after he smacked Pop Smoke and humiliated him. And that became, like, a viral moment that he held, he held on to because mm. then he shot the music video with Travis Scott right on Flatbush Junction where he got chapowed at. So, like, he's... And he's saying, fuck Kiki in songs. Like, he's... <sighs> Like, he's on a mainstream level with Drake and 50 Cent telling mm-hmm. niggas that's still in the hood, nigga, fuck you, suck my dick. Yeah. yeah it, it was different, <laughs> it was bro. Crazy. It was just different, bro. It was mm-hmm. just different. He, he had aura. It was like... He had aura. aura. Yeah. Okay? What kids yeah. be talking about nowadays? Like, nah, nigga. No, he had aura. that. It was that yeah. right there. My a lot boy. of Panamanians do, though. I'm just <laughs> saying. You know? <laughs> and, yeah, I, I think it was perfect. It was like, again, when social media was just, uh, like, really becoming as big as it is now like i would see the video circulating the leaks him in the studio dancing like he just he had character he had he was entertaining he he was a he had a natural like entertainer performer mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. uh, essence to him mm-hmm. so it was just like it was easy to like buy into um so yeah yeah gotta gotta definitely get a lot of credit absolutely miss him a lot miss him a lot Um, crazy it's been four years since that but like who would you bank on armand i'm curious to know like which new artist are you hoping would be like all right i'm rooting for you i don't know i really don't know what about you will i I don't have one that like i'm like banging or rooting on but i'll i'll give i'll give a good rookie of the year that i feel like everybody up here thought was about to be something so crazy Mm -hmm. nigga do y'all remember fetty wops rookie year i'm glad you said that come on i was it was it was it it was gonna come up 2010 2015 my nigga monty i thought monty was about to be the hot i'm like yo this nigga monty like they going like they going bar they going band for band like these niggas is hard i think the first fetty wop song i heard I think it was trap. It was trap queen. Hey, what's up? Hello. My as nigga, you, soon as you, you know, I heard go. it. I was, I was messing. And I, that shit I was, was on the radio. I, like, I was in Ohio. I was messing with this girl, and this like she like she like got a hotel room or something. And she's like, I'm about to go. We about to go to McDonald's to get some shit. She's like, I'm about to play my favorite song. She played it, and I looked. I was like, What the fuck is this? She's like, This some trap. This some trap queen. Like this name. She's like, She said. She said, I'm your trap queen. I said. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> said, Wait. She ate that. No, she did. So then, like, so then, like the whole time, like listen, I'm like trying not to like it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Came my trap queen. You, you try to hate sometimes. I'm, to hate. I'm, like, I'm like, whatever. Like, yeah, whatever. Then I get back. Like, right when I get back, and so I'm like, no, type no. it in. And hey, what's it. up? Hello, <laughs> lyrics. Right, facts. Like, what we gotta talk about? about that. I don't know what it is. Like, sometimes, like back in the day, when when women would, would put me onto something, you used to be like, and like they would obsess over it. I'd be like. What the fuck is this shit? Get out of here. And it's like, you know, as as I'm older now, I appreciate women are incredible tastemakers. Like, and they ultimately decide what's hot. So I don't know why, like, men, I guess it was ego and we we weren't fully mature yet. So women would be like, yo, this the shit, this hot. You listen, you like you you try to not like it. Trap Queen was undeniable. (laughs) It was was undeniable. undeniable, And that that was the semester I crossed Alpha. So 
Oh, no. I pop out at the party. I'm bald. Like I'm getting all the attention. Like yeah, new alpha hey, on the block. Up? Hello, Fetty's prime, and and he was a Jersey nigga. We we hadn't had someone to really pop off in a yeah. long time. So I think the novelty of that got people really invested in him because he didn't sound like Jersey niggas we were familiar with. He didn't sound like Joe Budden. He he didn't sound like Sugar Hill Gang. Like a he, red man. Yeah, like like <laughs> he, he sounded like some like. Damn near like a down, like kind of like a down south type nigga, but like melodic and all this was like, it was just, it was new. It was fresh. It was unique sound. And he was just so fucking consistent. Trap Queen, 679, My Way. When I heard My Way, Getting bro, the Drake remix, like. When I heard My Way, I was like, yeah. Yeah. This nigga might be Michael he, Jackson. Bro, he what was. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> he was out of there. And then. Russia was special, bro. His debut album, like, yeah. smoked it. it. It was just really good. And, you know. The cover is amazing, too. Like, how he's looking on the cover with, like, yeah. the, the eye. The eye. Like, yeah. That was so, a whole thing. It was so, it was so, like, it felt so authentic. Yeah. And also the representation for the, like, the young kids mm-hmm. who had the same condition. Facts. It was, like, yeah. very it was cool. hard. Yeah. It was cool. It was, it was really, like, it was, he was, he was intriguing. You, we wanted to know. More about him, bro. He had niggas drinking Remy Martin, bro. Yeah, bro. Remy, boy. <laughs> like, yeah. Seventeen thirty eight. The way he could harmonize was special, bro. Like the way he could harmonize shit and like say shit was just like I don't know what type of mix he was using on his voice or who his engineer was, but they was going crazy. Yeah, bro. no. It was like they perfect. did their thing with him. He was, he was, was like perfect, bro. Nah, the twenty tens. I really feel like they ain't gonna do it like that no more. It's gonna be tough because we can we can go on and on. We can think of so many people. I just don't yeah. think it can be done like and, that. And again. I feel like because it was just such a formative time for us. Like growing up, it was either I listened to the radio, I listened to what my dad was playing, I listened to the gospel my mom was playing, or I watched One Hundred Six in Park, MTV, whatever. So it was what was being like fed to me. Kids don't do that. No or way. CDs that I had for my CD player. As we got older and we had access to computers, we could find stuff we liked ourselves. So we we were able to curate what we liked and niggas putting us on like the, the, the fucking good Fridays, the good music was doing shit like that. Like you knew every Friday something was coming, yep. but then otherwise you were scouring the internet yes. to find shit, passing around like links to shit, hoping you ain't get a virus, like <laughs> really digging through the virtual crates to find music. And so I think just because it was <clears throat> a time where we were finding ourselves and, you know, maturing and able to have so much autonomy within it, and it felt competitive. Like, it felt like all these niggas were trying to edge each other out to be the best. The, 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 uh, Big Sean's rookie year for me. Like, yes. Uh, the, great. That was a good year great. for him. Great, absolutely. Like, you know, now we, we could make jokes and all that, but, like, 2010, 2011 Big Sean, huge. All right. I feel like, like bro, that nigga. Also, how you said, like, people were, like, edging, trying to edge themselves out and being competitive. Like, even, even as listeners, I feel like that was happening because even... Um, like, that's when SoundCloud blew up. Yeah. And that's when Pass the Ox used to be, a, like, oh, Pass the Ox. And, like, if a nigga got on the Ox and had, like, hits after hits, like, mm-hmm. damn, who's this nigga? Like, yeah. what the fuck? That, like, that would be Like, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, that used, to be, that used to mean something to people. Like, now it's, like, just a joke, like, or, like, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, oh, it's just Pass the Ox. But, like, Pass the Ox used to really be something. Like, you smoking with your homies and you got the Ox and you play, yeah. like, what, five songs in a row? Yeah. And niggas asking what you like. Damn, you, like, Loki got good ass music taste. Great times. For real. Like, it was, like, special, bro. Great That's times. how I got into music for real. Like, niggas used to be like, damn, like, you kind of know what's, like, hot. Like, yeah. yo, Will, you play the music. Okay. Yeah, because like, because because everyone didn't have everything, so mm-hmm. it was like, yo, like that new ASAP tape just dropped, I got it, or like yeah. Chief mm-hmm. Keith just dropped, I got it, bro. Like, all right, bro, plug in. Like, oh god, bro. And you you set the vibe for everyone. So yeah, it was it was it that era will never be replicated because like the consumers were were hungry, like <sighs> like we were looking for stuff. Yeah, the artists were hungry to get their shit out. You know, it wasn't just uploading something to Spotify. It was like, yo, that Piff or world, SoundCloud real, or bro. like, you know, they they were really fighting, competing for our attention, competing Seriously. for for mix our ears. Mixtapes were mixtapes. Mixtapes, yeah, yeah like, absolutely. Real <laughs> mixtapes, like. and, and even in the beginning of the blog era when all these new niggas popped out, you still had Wayne dropping tapes. You had Hello? Fabulous dropping tapes. Hello? You had Rick Ross still dropping tapes. Yeah. Like Gucci. The, the niggas from the 2000s. Damn, we didn't talk about, well, what would Wayne's rookie year be? like? He had so many. Yeah, like, because he, he he was around since the 90s. Like, yeah, he don't count. He, he made that star turn Carter too, but it was like, yeah. and, I, and I think a lot of people weren't really familiar with him until then, honestly. Like, I think the first Wayne song I heard was Go, Go DJ. So that had to be what, like 2000? Nah, I had a crush on him when he I mean, had most, braids. M- like a lot of people, like except Ebony, but like a lot, of people, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people first time here in Wayne, especially like bro, we were like, I don't, I hate when people like try to be down themselves for us like being kids and like just like 
like, bro, we were just finding shit out. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in like, some, yeah. people, some people, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, when you grow up in New York, I feel like you're just, like, acclimated to shit so much more earlier. Mm-hmm. Just because like, you're in the city. Yeah, shit yeah. moving city, fast. Yeah, shit's moving fast. Like, y'all just be hip, like, my nigga. Like, you at the barbershop, and yeah, nigga, come, like, nigga come up with a bootleg CD mm-hmm, of all the new mm-hmm, hot songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my boy different. Abdul used to give me three for five. Facts, bro. She's shout different. out to Abdul. So, yeah, like, shout out to yeah. Abdul. So, yeah, Ebony and probably people like her, like, she probably was hip to Wayne hella early mm-hmm. or, like, other people early and it's just like that's I mean just... also 106 and Park like he invent he coined the term bling bling and cash money was like dominating so mm. you know I did like bling, I already bling, fucked with Manny bling, Fresh bling, and Juvenile bling, already at that bling, point bling. so I'm like oh who's this little cute one with the braids <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then we get to the 2020s and we have seen a <sighs> lot of people rise mm-hmm. and have major moments mm-hmm. and those moments stayed moments Mm -hmm. and i think even a very recent example sexy red seemingly kind of flamed out a little bit like she dropped a two-pack like the other day and she did i I don't see no one talk about it yeah i I covered it for our new music column the songs were cool but it was like i ain't gonna fry i'm happy that that minstrel show about to end what sexy yeah wow you said, what, what, what'd you call it? Minstrel show. Minstrel show. <laughs> Holy shit. If this was the early 2000s, she would have been another Kia. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I mean, yeah, and she been a, we she definitely have she to been acknowledge. Been a I'm just playing. We like talked about show. it earlier. Cons- consumers are... <laughs> getting, getting some. Consumers are easily <laughs> impressed. Like, Sexy has yeah. an appeal to her in being very, like, raw, very, very like, un- uh, like very unpolished. And... Just kind of being herself, and I and I think that's dope. She's just herself, and there's there's definitely been drama throughout her career, um, which has propelled her into notoriety. But like the cosigns too, like she gets she had Nikki on the um, mm-hmm. uh, was it uh, what, what? uh, Pound Town, Pound yeah. Town the remix, remix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nikki did the Pound Town remix. Um, she worked with a bunch of the niggas who I can't think of right now. But Drake co-signed her. Right, of course, yeah. Obviously, the Rich Baby Daddy it's and the You My Everything yeah. and um, other Chief. joints. It's yeah. her, new, her nigga now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she's had she's had big moments. She's utilized the internet very well. She's great at that shit, especially um, Twitter. She's yeah. fire. Yeah, she's utilized. You can tell it's her herself, not and, a social manager. And that's, that's why her. People, people be trying, like, okay, I'm glad you said that because people be trying to argue with me. Like, no. no, that's not her. That's not her. That's, that's somebody. No. Like, nigga, that is her, that's bro. Her. Like, As a social on, manager, that's I can her, tell bro. you, that, that is, is her, sexy bro. red. She enjoys somebody's Twitter. Like, yeah, somebody's yeah. like, she's run, they, they run it. I'm like, no, they don't. They bro. probably run her other platforms, yeah. but Twitter, she's on that shit herself. Yeah, fact, you can just tell, bro. And it's funny, too, because, like, the first time I really got familiar with her, it was that viral video when she did the the live studio session for Up Rocks performing uh, uh, Pound Town. And <laughs> niggas hated it. Niggas was like, what, this is trash. Like, is this really where rap is? But they hated it into fame. <laughs> and then she came with more and she actually had some good records. Get a sexy shit like that. All that. Like, she actually put out good stuff. So it was like, I remember I, I, was, at, I was at my dad's birthday dinner and I was, and I, I'd, I'd made a joke on Twitter one day, like, um, Sexy Red could make Black album, but Jay Z couldn't make some. It was a joke. It was a joke. But like, m- my brother's no friend shit. took it seriously and like sent the tweet to him. He was like, "My brother's like, you actually like Sexy Red?" I was like, "I don't think she's like artistically good, but she's made like fun songs that I like." Like, I don't. Know. It's it's hard to kind of assess or quantify it. Like, I don't think she's a lyrically skilled rapper. I don't think she's got like the technical ability of a rapper. She but makes good music. Man. She's just. Yeah, she's kind of she's found a way to just make good music. Is it good? I, 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 there's a bunch of songs I like. Get it sexy is low key. Hard. Get it sexy is hard. All right. can't lie I got a hot take, y'all. Okay. Per use, but I got a hot take. Okay. I do feel like the influx of female rappers mm-hmm. has introduced a fan base of female consumers that don't like hip hop normally mm. and would never even listen to hip hop on a normal tip mm. because I remember being young and that's why I was the girl that will always be with the boys cuz I'm the one who's listening to hip hop and smoking weed and mm. doing certain things that the other girls weren't doing and I was listening to R&B too like I love R&B but I just really loved hip hop as well so it wasn't as popular for women or common rather 
for women to be listening to, consuming, engaging in hip hop and hip hop topics. So yeah. with Sexy Red coming out, she's a part of that female rap wave. Yeah. So I would just see a lot of girls who are just not from the hood, mm -hmm. just not don't even relate to anything she's talking about, just getting all hype in the parties, yeah. twerking and uh -huh. shit. And it just be like Girl, like, yeah. you the same bitch that would tell me you don't like Nikki because her attitude and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you fucking like this shit? Mm -hmm. This shit don't make sense to me. Yeah, no, her and a lot of them have definitely opened the floodgates, which it's cool. Like, hip, more people are talking about consuming hip-hop, but it does muddy the waters of, like, the assessment of it. Like, yes. who is actually popular? Who is actually good? Because yes. the shit that is popular... Popular and good are mutually exclusive. At this point. We, we've heard a lot of trash popular stuff. Right. And we've heard a lot of good stuff that we feel like should get more attention, but it doesn't. So that's that's, that's definitely a good point. And I, I do remember those days. Like, like, w w like w women rappers were set aside, but, like, women hip-hop fans felt like yeah very it didn't exist rare almost. like i had a good... not to say that not to say that they didn't exist i don't want someone no, to think we're no being actually like, you're right making a generalization but the 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 percentages were a lot lower a lot more lopsided like i had a good friend christian king you know when you go to school with someone you remember they full government yeah, name. yes absolutely like i they'd be like why are you saying my phone name because that's how i know you yeah, nigga yeah. <laughs> but my friend christian like, that's your king, name nigga right <laughs> oh, <my bad. laughs> but he we used to burn each other cds mm -hmm. like we used to come to school Love and like rich. burn each other music and like Family Guy episodes and shit like that. That's and hard. like, I would never forget he burned me like the whole, I forgot which Lloyd Banks project it was, but I was just so in awe mm -hmm. and just listening to it. And I didn't have any other person to, like Christian became like my best friend like that school year because of our love for hip hop. It wasn't too many females that I could bond with over yeah. that shit. So it was just, or even dudes too, cause a lot of them would just listen to what came on on the radio. They yeah. weren't listening to projects and, like, really, you know, prioritizing uh, music discovery and stuff yeah. like that. So I feel like that's where the sexy red shit and, like, all the other fake feminism shit and mm. stuff came from. <laughs> like, I also think that's why Megan's going to be okay because these new female fans, they want you to be positive and everybody's friend and, yeah. and talk about politics and be a girl's girl even if that ain't really you like mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck if my fave is a girl's girl mm -hmm. or not can you fucking rap mm -hmm. that's all i care about yeah, and meg <laughs> has niggas who fuck with her too like men genuinely think she's good at making music like, they still do yeah because yeah. i feel like that situation that she was in over the it's, pandemic it's probably created not a divide. as many not as many as before but i like she still got that core of niggas who like yo when it like make a bar because she can she can she's capable she's definitely yeah. capable um but yeah when we get to these 2020s and we look at the many rookies that have come and gone and just the different times like like we've said, radio isn't a priority anymore. Some of them do stop by radio stations, but it's not as many of them. It's these podcast interviews. It's these streamers. It's Instagram Live. It's TikTok. It's, it's, <sighs> what else do these niggas do to push themselves? Streamers. Street? He said he got, oh, he got with that already. My fault, my streamers, fault, my fault. yeah. Um, the paid aggregated pages like Pop Crave and mm, Spiritual World. Yeah, a, a lot of paid promotion. The neighborhood talk. Yeah. And, yeah. and they don't even have no creative direction. They yeah. will literally it's just be like. Spiritual World? Uh huh. Nah, I know you heard them shits in meetings. I know you heard it. Spiritual Word definitely be like. I, cannot I know you heard it in meetings. Nah, I mean, nah bro. Mm. You, you, you're 100% right. That's why it's just, it's just funny. Like, I'll be like, like, wait, hold on. Mm. Especially the ads that Huncho pay for. You know I don't fuck with that nigga, but I'll be like, wait, you pay for this? <laughs> you could have hit me up, bro. Mm -hmm. Call me. Because, like, we could at least add a little creative direction to the ad. This should be looking real pathetic. Yeah. But it's it's hard to determine what the metrics for success are because, mm -hmm. obviously, streaming is a thing now. So it's not people going out buying your CDs. They can listen from the comfort of their homes. And as we've seen, niggas can manipulate streaming with bots, with, with merch, with bundles. And even if Billboard changes the rules, niggas find ways to finesse. So... It's hard to determine what how a new act in this era will develop that staying power. Like you can be popping on social media. Doesn't mean anything. A lot of nope. popping people on social media whose music we don't care about. Like you can you can sell a lot and then your numbers will quickly start to dwindle. Like people just stop caring. Like it's it's really hard to determine. I mean, obviously again, we can we can 
We can point to Cash Cobain, who's got a genuine hold on New York right now. His sound is taking over beyond the city. He's 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 on the radio. He's doing shows like the the love when you're when you're in his presence with other people. Like he came out at a party next door show. I, I was there. Huge huge reaction to it. People were so hyped to see him do that. Um. So yeah, that's like you can just kind of see the organic love that he's getting but Mm -hmm. you have to kind of see it in person because if you were only judging it by the internet it'd be easy to be like i don't don't actually believe this like like if if you see that fan account a uh, feed slizzy Slizzy feed like like, you see that so that goes back to the (laughs) algorithm thing that i was telling you about with the four bat stuff Mm -hmm. because i'm deep in new york tiktok Mm -hmm. new york twitter that cash cobain shit is every motherfucking i i I see mad slizzy feed posts every day but not just but it's dope like i I, I fuck with slizzy feed not just it's crazy bro after this i'm gonna tell you who runs it you're gonna be like what the fuck <laughs> you're not gonna believe who runs it you're gonna be like what the hell i can't tell it i can't subscribe yeah, to the yeah, patreon yeah. to find yeah. out <laughs> yeah, like, uh, honestly that's some patreon shit i can't yeah. lie to you if y'all want to find out who runs slizzy feed pay for that episode but, <laughs> but. I, I online it does look like a phenomenon to me mm-hmm. but i'm also deep into new york tiktok yeah. so it might look that way on my specific algorithm mm-hmm. and like my friend group been listening to him for since like before the pandemic yeah, so facts. that could be the reason why but on the internet it do look like he's all over the place mm-hmm. and you know he panders to women yeah we're like you said we it we works. make the stars yeah and if you not like trying to include us in you're not going to win. Like, even back to Pop Smoke, you know, I'm from Hawthorne, so a lot of the people would, like, look at me on some, like, oh, you know, like, you interviewing the Crips and not the folks, and I'm just on some, oh, the folks are black bald, mm. and, and I would just be like, listen, y'all, um, bias aside, because we did have, like, a lot of arguments, I didn't feel supported by my home team, mm-hmm. but I was, like, unbiased aside, the lokes are so horny mm-hmm. that they don't forget to exclude us. <laughs> it's true. Pop Holy Smoke is saying, baby girl, Holy come and meet the woo. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? So then bitches is like, I want to meet the woo. <laughs> like, if Bro, that's how it was The worth- crazy thing is, it was niggas that wanted to meet the woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. They definitely did. But, you know, like, you know, it, they always include women yeah. in it. Like, even if it's, like, on some misogynistic or disrespectful shit, like Fabio saying, you could post a picture, but you better not tag me. Mm. Little mama, I'm married. Like, it's a lot of things. Like, you have to include us. You can't diss a nigga the whole song. Yeah. You have to make the girls want to shake something. Absolutely. I can't lie to you. Pop and Fabio and... Niggas, I feel like they got niggas back to dancing. Even though I know, even though, even yeah. though I know, even though I know, twirling and all that shit was like yeah. low key dissing no, and this the, and that. No, Shmoney like, dance. Well, Shmoney dance. Shmoney dance was it. But yeah, like, like the way that like when like when Pop came out, niggas was doing. Wait, Ooh, wait. Oh my! <laughs> it, it, got, it got real. It got real. It got real. It started to get real funky in them parties, yeah, my boy. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. that's what, it was just like niggas yeah. getting sturdy and shit. You yeah. gotta. Yeah. You can't forget the women. You gotta do it for the ladies. Absolutely. You can't. Yeah. I, I really miss like dance music, like Gangster, dances, bro. having dances to do. Like, yeah, it's rare. Yeah, we, we don't we don't really get that. That should anymore. be fun. Like that's why that's why like to me like the Rinsky was corny to me, but I feel like I I get why people like to do mm. it. Like like when it comes on, like to me it looks like it looks like whatever to me. But like now niggas is doing it in football games and like yeah, celebrations. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like damn, like this shit is really like. People like doing New York that. run the world, man. Yeah, they do. It's, it's, yeah, it's just something about having coolest a place dance in the world attached to a dope song. Like a dope yeah. song mm-hmm. where you see a dance and it takes off. You're like, I, like that's lit. Like it just it's yeah. another it's another touch point. Like it's we'll we'll always remember summer 2024 Fisher and and the Reemski because they're all connected yeah. and they they helped. I think I, I think you just I think you just said something that I didn't realize, but like it. it, it we get more touch points as as far the, the like we start to move on in society. Like there's so many touch points for people now yeah. to like like shit. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. used to be like little touch points, but now there's like hella touch points. Yeah. Like where yeah. oh I seen on this or I seen it on on or TikTok or yeah. I don't I don't use TikTok, but I use IG. Like it's so many different like touch points of like indicators of something like that people will like like or like yeah. what might 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 make them like something you and know? it's not like com- community oriented it's yeah, like it's very, like very individualized like, yeah, like, it's like, we're, like for the first time kids aren't listening to what their parents listen mm-hmm. to yeah i was about to say like <laughs> yeah bro like i feel like bro i feel like kids don't even go to like family reunions no more like niggas like kids don't know kids don't 
like Frankie Beverly passing to us was like, damn, like Frankie yeah. Beverly, like I feel like I feel like if like kids twenty years from now, if somebody like passed from our era that's important, niggas would be like, uh Yeah. I just feel like it's not it's the not, way Yada used to disrespect Biggie and Pac. Yeah, I like won't it's be like surprised. Like, bro, this shit is crazy, bro. These niggas are not like there's just there's, there's kids, I swear to God, there's gonna be kids in like twenty years or forty years. That's never heard the emancipation of Mimi mm. by like Mariah Carey gonna be like, yeah. why the fuck do y'all care about her so much? Like, nah, don't worry. Mm. I got a solution. Like, what? I got a solution. I'm doing a 2B TV rebrand, right? Mm -hmm. And because I think everything sucks and I don't give a fuck about the new music, I'm going to change my platform to a music education platform. And you know how VH1 used to do the I Heart the 80s, I oh Heart the 90s. God. Now I'm gonna start producing that type of stuff because oh they're not gonna God. get it until Facts. they get it. Yeah. Like, even Michael Jackson, like, when I seen the doc, the oh, uh, most shit. recent thriller, um, 40 or whatever, the most recent doc, I'm like, wow, you really changed the course of music videos just because you thought everyone's shit sucked. Yeah. And you love movies, so you created a cinematic-like music video, and then it changed the course of music history forever. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. So any, I think anyone would appreciate that, but we don't give the kids a chance. We don't. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of old people who just immediately denounce anything that the yeah. kids are but listening you need stuff to. They like got you... a short attention span, but you put some dope five-minute shit, they're going to listen to yeah. the whole you thing. Some, yeah. You need something like her, like what, what she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they don't... Yeah. They... You need something like that. Or why VH1 don't got those shits on their YouTube channel? Like, there's yeah. so many easy solutions, but it's just no one wants to take the risk anymore. So here we are. Bro, yeah. one, 2B's gonna save the day. One day, VH1 did a Behind the Music um, marathon. It was the most amazing thing I've ever, like... I was like, damn, like, I used to love these, like... Mm -hmm. Just don't sitting do that and, no like, more. really yeah. learning about these superstars, like... And if Armand try to pitch that shit at work, he like, probably gotta fight here. tooth and nail just to get a fucking approval. It's just... It's so fucked. Yeah. Yeah, no, the other culture is very complacent. Um, but yeah, I, I love that, and I love the where this conversation got to because I think when we look at the changes in how artists have moved, we can also kind of track like how our consumption of music has changed. To when when we're kids, it's what maybe our parents passed down to us or the radio put us onto. In high school, in the blog era, it was like what our friends passed along to us, and now we're at the age where we can find stuff ourselves. But it's up to us, like if we want music to stay dope and we want the actual talented people to be elevated like it's up to us to champion that and also pass it down to yes. to people too like so when when old heads are like weird about newer artists i'm like all right maybe it's not for you but like don't don't like when, when i was young and an old head would like give me shit for what i like it, it just made me like more argumentative and more rejecting yep. of what they tried fuck to put you me old head to. like fuck <laughs> out of here no i like right now i, I want to listen to little uzi i don't care about jay-z like like that's just as an example no um, it's true we're too shit, young though. to care about yeah. and i'm a brooklynite here mm -hmm. we're too young by the time we were like consciously listening to yeah. music kanye was giving him like that little like he did the fake retirement partnered mm -hmm. with the kanye did the producing thing mm -hmm. but he was like pivoting to business mm -hmm. yeah. like yeah. little Wayne's era is really the era that yeah. we saw. Yeah. Missy Elliott, Ludacris, yeah. Nelly, yeah. Ashanti, yeah. Alicia Keys. Those yeah. are the people yeah. that we those saw. Are people. Like those, like the kind, like yeah, like that. Like when people be like, yeah, like and, and I have no problem if you think Jay Z's that and Jay Z's that for you. But like for me, it was really like Kanye. It was really like it was like those those people. All the people you just named was like yeah, those yes. those, those are the ones. Yes, yeah. those are my. My goats or whatever the fuck. Yeah, you know, they so. had the two the early two thousands mm -hmm. on smash, especially yeah. Nelly, who don't even really get acclaimed for it. He his owns first, his masters and my nigga, his first two albums were so crazy. Don't, don't you even remember make no niggas sense. was putting the band aids yes. on? Like talk yeah. about impact and inf like yeah, he had Gene all those rolled up with yes. Tim's jersey. Yes. All that. nigga, yeah. ride with me is such a crazy Boy, song. And then he did the country collab. Like come on, yeah. bro. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this was this was like a fun. Um, kind of look back at things, you know, I, and I, we talk about it a lot and my optimism for music is very low right now. And so sometimes I just need to look back like, God damn, growing up with 50 Cent, growing up with Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller, even the recent Cardi B and her, yeah. her popping off is like really good times, really good times. So but you're not banking on no one I, right now. I, I don't, I don't know. What about you, Will? I don't know who. Who you think is gonna be like at least one or two artists that you be like, you know what? I'm I'm looking to see they're on my radar mm -hmm. and I'm looking to see if they can hold down the fort. For me, I say Dolce, Lotto. Yeah. Dolce's cool. 
and Chloe Bailey. I ain't gave up, I ain't gave up on her yet. Um, Somebody, I'm still on the lookout for males, um, R and B and hip hop. Somebody yeah. said <clears throat> something about Dochi and it made me think, but it was kind of it was kind of true. Like Dochi's like the closest thing that we've seen to like um to like a Missy Elliott product, mm. where it's like she's doing shit that's like. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Very, and it's, very but artistic, it's, it, but, very it, but it's very good. Every whoa is good. Yeah. It's like it's not like whoa, oh, that shit was trash. It's like whoa, 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 and that's why I feel like like when a Missy Elliott video to come on TV, nigga, I always sit my ass down Top and be ready, ready, ready to go. Granted, yeah, yeah like Nick, yeah, bro, like yeah. the da- everything. So I think she's good. Um, there's more. I just gotta. Yeah, I don't know. Bro. Yeah, I, think about it. I, I don't want to bank on anyone. Too many people have let me down. Like yes. I, I have people on my radar too, but I'm. I, I, I like to wait a few projects before right, I really fair. put the stamp on them. Like, all right, they're next up. Because you might drop two great albums and then just completely run out of gas. Mm. So I'm I'm tired of building that connection <laughs> with someone and then just being let down. So, yeah, I just don't even put myself in that position. But that's our conversation. Listeners, let us know some of your favorite rookie years. Let us know your thoughts on how their assessments and their metrics for success have changed over times. Let us know some rookies who you believed in, who, who, who let you down. Um, you know, we, we embrace all that conversation. That is our episode for the week. Always good to be back. I'm back from Always. Cancun, sunburnt, a uh, little darker, but I'm here. I'm alive. Shout out to Aloe Vera, um, <laughs> the gang. Always good to be with y'all. Um, and so for Will, for Miss Two Bs, for myself, of course, you need to stay safe, stay humble, and stay Stay busy. busy.